This is Rowena Dooley asking Seoul citizens to report for duty. And greetings, greetings, greetings. Welcome back to Soul Citizens. I'm Griffin Gaming RPG. And today is Sunday, what, the 24th of March. And we are so happy to be back with you this week. Joined once again by an illustrious group of co-hosts I have with me today. The man himself to my left, to your right, or to my right and your left, whichever way it goes. Kalrati, how are you, my friend? How are you? Hello, Griff. Hello, Nomad. Hello, Twitch community. It's great to be here. I'm feeling fantastic. Fantastic day. How are you doing? I'm doing good. I'm good. You've had a busy, 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 busy two weekends, right? Yeah, it has been lively. Yeah. I would have to say. <laughs> <laughs> Very lively. That's good. That's good. That's good. Is there anything that you can share with the community? We were just talking before the show. I know that there's some things that uh, you're limited to share. But there are some things that you can share. One of the things we can celebrate is some things that happened this weekend. What was the thing that we were sharing earlier with our good friend Nomad? Yeah, so from fantasy to reality, I would have to say, um, <laughs> you know, uh, the devs have been really kicking it, kicking it um, with respect to silver meshing, uh, specifically the Stanton only build. Uh, of course, it's built. It's on the three point two two build, but you know, some really exciting stuff about the the player cap. Um, the highest has been eight hundred, both yesterday and today. Um, it has been a bit rocky, but, you know, for them to be able to actually achieve that has been quite the feat, yeah. you know? So um, different com um, DGS configurations, allocating certain servers to different planets and such to kind of, you know, help with the player load, but um, some really good FPS and such, um, FPS, server-side FPS performance, but it's 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 been a really good start, a really good start so far. You know, I think it's uh, one of the reasons why I want to mention that is we've been having these conversations post citizen con you know in the community and even amongst ourselves is you know can cig pull off some of the things that they've been talking about and even though server cap was not a big conversation it was something that we talked about as being vital to the game moving forward right not just 323 but especially 4.0 especially when pyro finally gets here uh you know it's great to get the extra real estate but if we don't have more people in the game then all we did was create a bigger desert and so the fact that, uh, and we've heard Chris Roberts say this, right? That he wants to have literally thousands of people in the game. I had predicted earlier, Nomad, by the way, Nomad is here. Nomad, I didn't get to introduce you before I started this whole conversation. Nomad, how are you? 
<laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, I it's all right. Uh, thank you. Uh, I'm uh, glad to be here. I'm Nomad. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's really ex exciting stuff going on in, uh, in, in Star Citizen these days. It is. It is, Nomad. Um, we had talked a few weeks ago, I think, on Soul Voices, and I somebody asked me what I'd like to see. And I think uh, I, I mentioned server cap. But I was looking for, to be honest with you, I was happy with 250 to 500. You know, that was the number I thought was like, okay, if we can, you know, maybe triple what we have, that'd be pretty cool, you know, but man, I mean, yeah. if they, if they give us 500 plus, wow, you know, that's going to be exciting. I mean, this is all testing you guys. There's no, nobody's saying what's going to finally come out, but we, but we, we there, and as Cal Wright, said, there are some things that they still have to work out, but the fact that they've been able to create a certain level of stability in the game that exceeds what we have now, uh, again, Another great step toward 2024 in the good stuff that CIG can present. So, Nomad, I know you're going to be ready to jump in, right? I know you're going to be ready uh, once they put us out there. <laughs> I actually fired up the game. Oh, oh, oh be still by beating I heart. Jumped in. I jumped in earlier today. Uh, got my joysticks out. Oh, and, my God. Uh, got things set up and uh, got, got my... Got all my uh, strafe going. Uh -oh. Got my roll, rolls. You know, my my just my, my you know all my oh twist my grips. Everything. Oh my god! I said, I'm jumping back in. You're so in. I did oh my god! Yep. I, I listen. Be, be still, my beating heart. I'll take that word from Sting. I appreciate that. That's awesome. Well, listen. You know, you're always welcome. We always hang out and jump in. So if you want to get some crash courses, or pardon the expression, or anything that you want to talk about. Out of the game, you know, hey, jump in any time. Okay, well, listen, we are talking today about our title is called Clutch Cargo. Now, I've got to ask this question, Nomad. I've got to ask, because I know you know, but i got to ask the young buck in the room. Calrati, have you ever heard of Clutch Cargo? No, this is the first time I've heard it. Okay, <laughs> all right, all right. Okay, so I'm going to go to Nomad. Nomad, are you familiar with Clutch Cargo? It's slightly before my time but yeah. yes i absolutely have okay 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 I'm all right just all just right. old enough to just to just have, enough to all right so i i guess i got to be the dinosaur in the room on this one clutch cargo was a cartoon that came out in the 1960s uh i was born in the early 60s but i watched it in the 70s and it was this uh this 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 uh, this is basically a cartoon right this guy's name was clutch cargo and he flew around in this plane and he had his family with him. It was it was a very cool show. And he went to safaris and stuff. Who remembers Clutch Cargo in the uh, in the in the chat? Anybody remember Clutch Cargo? We'll give away Idris. No, I'm kidding. No, but if anybody knows who Clutch Cargo is, feel free to drop in and say I remember Clutch Cargo. Um, but anyway, uh, we are talking about this title of Clutch Cargo because Cargo now is something that people have been hoping for, reaching for, uh, waiting for for the longest time. Ever since we heard of 2.0 on on Cargo, Cargo Refactor was what we were calling it before. Uh, you know. Folks have been looking for this. And so we're just going to go give you guys a little bit of a history, though, leading up to how we got to where we are with cargo. Now, there is one image, unfortunately, I didn't get to put into the presentation. Maybe I'll look at it while we're watching the videos. And that was the one with the cargo elevator that was at the uh, landing pad out on the moon. Um, but we're going to talk about the evolution of cargo and how right now CIG is introducing it to us through the use of hangers. So we're going to go ahead and change up and go to that real quick show you guys a couple of videos and um we'll talk about this when we see it so let's take a look at this very first video oh wow that's up why is that on let me turn that off that shouldn't even be on uh turned off everything wow what happened um give me one second here gang because that is way ahead of where we are in the show turn that off and let's watch this very first video i hope this comes on because if um if my video stuff didn't load right we're gonna have some problems no, it looks like it did. Just that that one didn't look. Okay, let's take a look at this gang. This is going to be throwback. Throwback Sunday, not throwback Thursday.
So my question to you guys is, do you guys remember that? Those hangers? Either of you? Oops, hang on. Let me turn my volume down. Hold on. Hold on. My, my audio stuff has completely gone nuts here. Hang on, gang. Uh, right, no, man, go ahead. I'm sorry. I I do not. Ah, that goes back before your time. <laughs> wow, Calrati, what about I, you? Do you remember that at all? You're muted. Oh, so they out of joint just after they had this. So oh, they okay. The the personal hangers only. Yes. And not the ones where right. you added, you know, ships. So I only saw these two the videos. Ah, okay, okay, yes. okay. Yeah, see though that black and white one with that 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 kind of balcony one. Uh huh. That was just a few, but I don't I don't remember that. Okay, yeah, I yeah. I remember Revel in York and all that. Okay, yeah, you're you came in where Cal Roddy's coming in. Then that's where you came yeah, in at. Yep, see, yep. I guess I'm the old dog in the room because I remember wow. these hangers. Okay, and yeah, wow. that there was that little walk area up there that was like a path. DK yep. Wildcat, thank you for the sub and welcome. Thank you so Thanks much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, that was a different type of thing. Um, these hangers go way, way, way back. And these were in 2013. We were so excited for them because there was this little bit of variety. As you can see here, they were different types of hangers. Uh, yeah. But you would take an elevator and go up to that walkway. And all it did was walk from one end of the hangar to the other. Then you came back down a different way. That's all it was. There wasn't anything special up there. Or maybe it wrapped around. I can't remember. These mm -hmm. hangers here were expandable. So like you can see, there's a Avenger there. And then you keep moving over. Um, this is when the hangers used to kind of blow up in size. They did that on the next set we're going to look at too. But mm -hmm. back then, everybody thought about hangers as being the place one where you spawned your ships. I'm not even sure how much hangar flare was a big deal back then. You know, we were getting some little items here and there. But as you can see, this was mostly based around the ships. You don't really see any lounging areas or work areas or anything like that in most of these hangars. But uh, this was early, early, early stuff in 2013. When we got these hangers, we were very, very, very excited about them. Um, so that's the first set of hangers. Now we're going to look at the next set of hangers, which were actually just a year later, just about over a year later, if I'm not mistaken. And this is what this looks like.
Okay, now, you know, I realize that there may be some people watching this, Cal Roddy, who never saw this. You know, like yep. they'll buy their ship and it'll say you get the such and such hangar, but they've never got to experience these, right? Yeah, they've never gotten to experience the impact and performance either. Yo, yo, Meg. Hey, yo, yo, Meg. Yo, yo, Meg. Thank you, yo, yo, Meg. 79 folks coming over to visit with us. Hey, I feel good. And we do feel good. Meg, we love you. Thank you so, so, so much. We appreciate you sending hey, happy to be here. the Double Dog team. The Double Doggers are over here hanging out with us. You all know Yo-Yo Meg. If you don't know Yo Meg, something's wrong with you. Yo-Yo Meg. You guys, make sure you guys check out Yo-Yo Meg. Awesome up and coming. She's not even up and coming anymore. She is out there as yeah. streaming it and doing it. So you guys make sure you guys check out Yo-Yo Meg. I feel good. We feel good. Thank you so, 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 so much for that subscription. Oh my God, I gotta see who did it. I've got all my screens all crazy here because of the buggy stuff that's happening over here. So that was Envoy. Hey, Envoy, good to see you. Thank you so much for the resub. And let's see, Shog Shogi? Oh, Sh Shogi HR, thank you for that. And Thrak is uh, giving out the gift Thrak sub. Up. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, yeah, thank you so much. And is it Tay Dogo? Tay Go? Uh, Tay Dog? Tay the Goat, <laughs> 1991. Thank you for that follow also. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, some of these people didn't see these. And I think, Nomad, you were saying these were the hangers you were familiar with too, right? Yes, this is where I was really immersed, really started getting immersed in the game. I, st I spent so much time in my revel in New York. It's just unbelievable. I loved it. Let me ask you a question. Sure. This was when we didn't have the verse. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's right. I mean, that's you right. know this what was, I mean? This was the verse. People, this was the verse. And I want to go back to something both you and Karate said. We spent time in these hangars, which is. Hours. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I, I want college money on this thing. Did you? <laughs> <laughs> so, for those of you who don't know, as you guys know, there are several hangars in the game. Uh, please help me if I forget them all. The Selfland hangar which is one that you see very similar. It's the green one, uh, kind of looks like the kind of industrial look to it. Uh, there's the arrow view, which is the slicker hanger that you guys see like when you go to Microtech. Uh, and then after that, we had two other ones that we don't have in the game right now. One was what we just saw there, the Rebel in York. happy to be here. Mayora Tawa, thank you so much for that follow. Thank you. Uh, the Rebel in York, which is the one you just saw on the screen. And now you're looking at the one called the VHG, VFG hanger. Uh, which was a hanger inside of an asteroid. And these hangers, uh, when we first got them, uh, you could, how can I say this? You, it was really weird, right, guys, how you had to spawn a ship in those hangers? You'd spawn a ship by looking at the floor. Am I remembering correctly? Or was it yeah, on the console on the first? Was it the console yeah, first? Yeah. Was it the console or the floor? The dot on the floor? It was a dot on the floor. Dot on the floor. So you'd go to yeah. this dot on the floor, click on it, then it would give you a list of which ships you owned. And back then, most of us may have had two, five ships. You know, that was it, you know. And the, you, you, as soon as you clicked on it, you'd have to walk away from that spot because yeah. the ship wouldn't spawn until so you walked away from it. And right. then when you walk away, then you turn around and boom, your ship would be there, right? It was kind of a cool little thing. And uh, you could get on your ship and do nothing. Yes, you could uh -huh. get on your ship. <laughs> and they would come in in various shot. states of... Uh, of, of uh, of uh, construction and damage. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and so you you just go sit on your ship and look around and walk around on it and and dream. That's what we did. We dreamed a lot back then. Um, we also didn't have the luxury in the first in the first stages of these hangers of doing anything with them. You couldn't place any of your hangar flare. Ow, Citizen Kilroy, thank you so much for that resub. Twenty eight months. We appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, you couldn't put your hanger flare down or anything. You had all this hanger flare stuff. And then eventually they did make it where we could place our hanger flare. Um, and so most of the people, right, Cal Roddy, we didn't think about the hangers being anything more than just a place to get our ships and the place to put our flare. Yeah, because uh, even, even um, when you know we were hearing CR talk about his stuff, um, Based, you know, due to the limitations in technology, we didn't really know where 
uh, these things were headed. Of course, the scope was, was smaller back then too. Um, so most of the time we were thinking, okay, we'll just go there, maybe invite some friends and we'll just hang out there, you know? Um, because that was the whole premise behind these, the, these hangouts until they started to evolve. Mm -hmm. And what, I was going to ask you, um, oh, that is loud. <laughs> Sorry, hold on a second. I'm trying to turn up Cal Roddy because he was a little soft and uh, I had that up way too loud. All right, let's see if that makes him a little bit better. Captain Jones, thank you. Thank you for that. Five community subs. Thank you. You guys get some shouts out to Captain Jones. Thank you so much for that. And El Aromas 370, thank you for the follow. We appreciate you. Thank you. Um, yeah, these hangers were um, were something to behold. And uh, I hate to say it, did you guys buy any ships based on getting a certain hanger, or you didn't care about what hanger you got as long as you got a hanger? I didn't really care. I just, I yeah. just had a, I had a hanger. I remember, however, I think it was the Rebel in New York to get the extra large to get the extra large hanger. Yeah, you had to get you had to get you had to get like a Connie or something. Yeah, to get yeah. The, to get a Revel in York and above, and I think at that time the biggest the biggest ship that we had was like the Starfarer. Yeah, that, that would go in these hangers because it's been reused for so many times. Yeah, <laughs> that was definitely the first. Yeah, large, large ship. I always remember that because the Starfarer was a hundred meters long. It was it was the mm. biggest ship at the time, and I think you got the VFG hanger if you or. You had to get something that was kind of industrial, like something you didn't get it for getting like a Connie. You had to get a certain type of ship to get a yeah, VFG so. hanger, if I'm remembering correctly. I just don't remember what the it was because the reclaimer wouldn't have been it, but there was something you had to get. Now, now the, here's the thing, guys. If you got those hangers, your ship was not restricted to that hanger. So in other words, if um if I got a Selflin hanger because I owned an Aurora, that's what you would get is the Selflin hanger. I could still spawn my Cutlass, or I could still spawn my, even my Connie in that hangar. But you got these hangers. Now, mind you, the hangar doors didn't open, y'all. They didn't lead to no place. So don't think that, oh, those hangers look so great. I wonder what they, no. We did nothing but stare at the hangar doors when you got in your ship. That was all you got to do in these hangars. But they did exist, and they were very, very cool. Now, the reason why we're showing you guys this is because we want you to see this migration of what we thought hangers were back in the day and what they have become now especially with CIG adding a, another feature that was kind of unexpected to a certain degree. We thought we were going to be able to set up our hangar flare, right, guys? Re maybe do a little repair on our ships and sitting there with our friends. But now CIG has made these places a repository for the items that we own, uh, you know, uh, resources that we may mine or salvage, vehicles that we... I never thought about vehicles being in here. Did you guys ever think? I mean, I know we had the golf cart, but I just thought the golf cart was just to drive around the hangar. Yeah, <laughs> no, I had no clue at all. Yeah, it was great. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You guys missed the days when we had, when we had a hoop in the hangers too, where you could jump your golf cart through the oh, hoop. Oh yeah, I saw those videos <laughs> with, the, with, with the ramp and everything. With the ramp, doing evil can evil stuff. Okay, so that's that. Um, Lady Charlemagne, thank you so much for the fifty bits. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And Mister Gibbs, thank you for that follow. Okay, so this is that little background we gave you on hangers. Now we're going to start talking about cargo. There are two videos that we're going to give you guys. CIG put these videos out within the last year. Uh, one of them, both of them, are design briefs uh, called "Cargo is a Career." And then we're going to talk about the latest ISC video that we saw. So get something to drink, get something to snack on. We're going to watch these two videos, talk about them, and then we're going to jump into where things are right now uh, with 3.23 coming and 4.0. So let's hop to it. In looking at the way that our teams are structured, especially after the Montreal merger with Turbulence, we decided to combine uh, USPU as well as Montreal PU into NAPU. NAPU stands for North American Thank you, Shogi. Universe. NAPU is the regroupment of three different cities. In order to kind of create a, a super team that gives them a lot of coding firepower as well as design firepower. NAPU is really a collection of people from Austin, from LA, from Montreal. We're all just getting together to try to make some amazing new features for Star Citizen PU. So that includes physicalized cargo, in-game shops, and newer features that we're looking into, such as exploration. We're working on mostly currently cargo and things regarding that. Um, we recently finished work on the Hall C. NAPU was formed in order to work on larger feature sets for Star Citizen. 
so that those features have the time and resources required to deliver them at the quality level that we want to see. NAPU includes several engineers, production, and QA. We have uh, six different programmers, actually. We have a few that are in LA, and then we have a few more in Austin. Right now, that includes James, Mitch, Kevin, myself, as well as Preston on production and Annalicia uh, in QA. Did I say everyone? We have two, <laughs> Mathieu and Emma, that are here in Montreal. Very happy yes, I think here. I got them all. So at this point, a lot of what we're working on is still in the design phase. I would say in the technical design and planning phase, but yeah. There's a lot of uh, TDD, like technical design document going on, preparing the, the feature and all the parts. There's a lot of uh, work uh, in that area. The North American Persistent Universe team are currently at the forefront of the next major evolution of cargo, hangar, and related inventory systems. And as their work begins to enter the PU over the next three to six to nine months and beyond, all building to what we hope will collectively become a true cargo career, we here at ISC, well, we didn't want to wait to begin telling the story. As much like the engineering and resource management systems of the EU PU team, this work promises to be utterly transformative to the overall Star Citizen experience. So these next two shows, well, they're going to be a bit different than normal. That's because we're not going to have anything to dazzle your eyeballs with just yet. Yes, the ISC gameplay capture team, as great as they are, well, we're going to let them take a break this week as we let members of the NAPU team take you through the design and intention of their current work in a two-part special we're calling Design Brief Cargo Career. Thank you guys for the hype train, by the way. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You guys are awesome. The focus of NAPU and the foreseeable future is going to include features such as freight elevators and instance hangars, as well as persistent hangars. Freight elevators are one of the biggest changes to cargo that we've seen in the entire history of the game. They bring the feature from being something that's somewhat magical to something that's physical. It adds friction, but also a gameplay experience around hauling cargo in our game. This one addition, I think, is going to change not just cargo, but also the way that we interact with everything else in the game, inventory, player items, purchases, ship items. It's a fundamental change to how players are going to deal with the world. Freight elevators are going to be implemented as an access point inside of player hangars. Where the player can interface with cargo to get it ready to put it on their ship. And you'll use a kiosk to interact with the freight platform in order to call things up from your inventory or to put things into your inventory. The way that the freight elevators are going to be implemented is actually using the same technology as we use for the cargo grids and the ships. Players will be using their tractor beams in order to detach things from the platform and then haul it onto their ship, and vice versa. They'll be using the tractor beams in order to detach things from the cargo grids and put them onto the freight platform. I think that this is going to make the whole experience feel a lot more tactile and organic, as well as there's a lot of fun and interesting gameplay around just how you stack things, how you sequence them, take a group of people, decide how you're actually going to load things together. It's like that time that you go and move with a U-Haul and your friends, you got to figure out where to put the couch, but in game. It's going to be figuring out where do we take that big box? Where do we put the, the ship items? Where do we put the guns? And try to sequence it in a way that's both optimal as well as, I think, fun. We don't just want to have the feature, you know, exist uh, in a void. Really what we want to try and do is work with the whole scope of the game to support cargo. So this is something for outposts, uh, for UGF, where we want to look at how do we really take advantage of cargo in these spaces. However, it does mean that the outposts will also support the same manual loading process that the hangars and those other locations use. So not only are you participating in cargo, you know, in a hangar, in a station, but out in the verse as well at an outpost. And while freight elevators will be available throughout locations in the Persistent Universe, much of the work involved in manually loading and unloading your vehicles will always involve your hangers, which presented the team with some unique challenges to address and overcome, starting with the next iteration of instanced hangers.
instanced hangers solve a particular problem. How do we have people spending an extended period of time in their hangar loading cargo now that we've added the, these freight platforms, but also allow the locations to have traffic coming in and out of the landing zones? What we're doing here is decoupling the access to a hangar from the occupancy. And all that really means is that we can dynamically create these hangars at runtime and they're kind of set aside for players to spend time inside of. Without getting too much into it, right, you're going to have a, a personal space. We're just looking at ways that a lot more players can do this simultaneously. We don't want to have a big choke Welcome, point technical. of everybody trying Welcome. to load their ships and unload and all trying to do that in the same space. So we have instance hangers as a way to, to put you in an area where you can feel comfortable, you can take the time that you want to load your or unload your cargo and, you know, really engage in that system the way that you choose. And so you can actually have your personal space to deal with cargo inside a hangar. And depending on your ship, you know, there'll be different, different situations and different locations for that. But the thing with this one is that when you leave, things gonna basically go away. Once you want to leave, you'll just make a request to ATC and the hangar will move into place, we'll open up the doors and you'll be able to leave. And then the same thing when landing, you make a request to ATC, the system will allocate the space for you, open the hangar and you can land. For the players, it will seem seamless, but underneath the hood, the system itself is going to be maintaining a representation of where all the players are, what requirements are needed, without having a bottleneck for players who are actually just trying to play the game otherwise. And then we have persistent hangars. Persistent hangers are kind of an evolution of instant hangers. And really what it is, is it's our first step towards real player ownership in the game beyond ships. The cool thing is that you will be able to put your stuff in it, come back to it, and it's still going to be there. It's just whatever the player wants to keep inside their hangar, that's their home. They can just leave them lie around. They can arrange them however they want, be it weapons or cargo or dead corpses or, or whatever. Very, very long term. Uh, I have no clue of any dates or anything, but you'll be able to customize it and upgrade it. So it becomes bigger, you can have bigger ships in them. And maybe at some point, even having them like at distant location, you could buy a second one. Uh, for now, it's gonna really be uh, on your own location. It's persistent to you and your character. And you can invite friends to your hangar, you can load up your ship, you can take the haul from your mission, you know, out of your ship and distribute it to your buddies. So persistence of hangars uh, is really important. This is going to be developed more in the future, and we're going to use the same technology that we're using to build this for other things in the game, such as player abs. And it's a real, I think, exciting way for the players to feel like they have a more permanent place in the game that they can call their own. I, I can't help but notice the ISC gameplay capture team snuck some conceptual visualization in there after all. What can I say? They love what they do. And of course, I'd be remiss if I didn't say that everything you're hearing about today is the current intention of the design team at the time that we film this. Now, as with all things you see and hear about on any ISC, it's always a work in progress and may, and often will, continue to evolve as development progresses and concepts are tested. Now, so far in our Design Brief cargo career, we've talked about how you'll move and store your boxes. So let's find out more about what happens inside those boxes going forward. With 320, we introduced a new packing system that allows us to use a larger set of box sizes right now. That includes one SEU, two, four, eight, 16, 24, and 32. However, with this new version of cargo coming out subsequently, we're gonna be adding the ability to have what we call inventory container boxes. Inventory actually plays a big part of cargo as well. When you look at the sheer scope of number of boxes and you know a number of weapons and armor and FPS entities that we have in our game, we really want to make sure that not only is cargo physical, physicalized, but that inventory has a proper location and place as well. If you go to Port Trestler and you hit I, you'll bring up the player inventory screen and you'll see that, okay, I have my access to Port Trestler inventory no matter where I am standing in the station. 
that's going to go away. And this is very important because what it means is it gives the players a way to transfer in a very clean and effective way all of the loose items that you collect during gameplay. A big change that's coming up is going to be having properties for those boxes. So that could be something like a box that's fragile or a box that could be radioactive or that needs to be kept cool. The other thing we're looking at with cargo and cargo boxes is the ability to store large items in your cargo boxes. This could be anything from a ship weapon uh, to even smaller vehicles like Grey Cats. That way when you're going with your friends, uh, you're gonna do a long haul across the verse. You can have these larger boxes filled to the brim with as many ship weapons as your ship is gonna carry. Anything that you think you wanna take with you and hold on to, now you can put them in an inventory container box, snap them into the cargo grid, and haul it into your ship. Additionally, you'll be able to take those to the freight platforms in order to put them into your inventories. So it gives a kind of universal way to haul things around in the game, as well as a way for players to be able to pirate player inventories now. Now that you have these goods that are locked up together in these inventory containers, it just takes a tractor beam in order to carry them off. So it gives a lot of gameplay possibilities for us to have with these loose items. A lot of these things will tie into missions and where you decide to place them on your ship. So we're really trying to make sure with cargo, it's not just a, a wide system, but that we're actually adding these kind of elements to help further gameplay, missions, and purpose. You guys had the week off. This is a design brief show. It's, it's talking and it's, it's intent and none of this stuff is ready to show yet. Did you, did you want a week off? <laughs> Your stuff's so weird anyway. No, no weird stuff for cargo grid. Back to the spaceship. We have some additional changes that we're going to be making to the cargo grids that allow them to have any sized item attached into them. At the moment, we have effectively one kinds of items that attach to the cargo grids. Those are the cargo boxes, and they all have a similar size step on the dimension. And what I just mean by that is they're all what we call one SEU length multiples on each side. We're going to have it to where anything can attach to the cargo grid, as long as it's a physical item in the game. Anything that you can grab with that tractor beam that can reasonably snap into place will be able to snap into place. And this is a requirement just to satisfy the inventory uh, changes that we're making now that you won't have this kind of magical access. But it also, I think, broadens the horizons about what your cargo grid uh, and all of your ships can be used for. I think it'll also open up a lot of fun gameplay around just figuring out how to arrange all these things in a way that works well. So yeah, that's part one of our talk about Design Brief Cargo Career. Next week, we'll be back with changes to... Yeah, I'm gonna stop there. Um... Any thoughts on what you guys saw there? Because that was our first kind of deep dive that they did on this whole new cargo refactor 2.0. Yeah, this is um uh I'm I'm really I'm really liking this because it's a focus on something other than combat. Uh it brings in uh I, I have an org that has a big logistics uh um I'm in an org with a with a, a big logistics uh uh, group mm -hmm. and um, and uh, this is exactly the kind of thing that we are going to be doing um, with uh, with inventory, with uh, with hauling goods, with uh, with basically logistics for the org, mm -hmm. logistics for hauling um, hauling items back and forth. Uh, it's it's cargo manifests. I've I, I know I've said this before. Um, there's, 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 you know, there's work 
to be done in the game if you're going to live in this game and 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 in this universe and that is going to be part of the your daily work and it's 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 really fulfilling to see this kind of to see this kind of detail uh going into 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 logistics and cargo okay go ready yeah you know i so the more I, I looked back at this video, I was wondering about certain questions because I think it's only when we have these hangers in our hands that we'll be able to test and see. Mm -hmm. For instance, um, I doubt this is coming in 3.23, mm -hmm. uh, but when it comes to stacking without the use of cargo containers, how that whole thing will operate? Because yes, um, on the first layer, let's say, you know, you attach like a dead body or Aurora. <laughs> Right? Um, can you stack anything on top of that? Mm -hmm. Because with respect to the cargo um, containers, since they have fixed dimensions, you know there wouldn't be any kind of um, strange gaps if you were to, you know, um, attach a cargo container on top of another cargo container. So maybe they have certain restrictions if you wanted to attach, um, I don't know, like a, a ship weapon mm -hmm. on a cargo grid, and you can't really attach anything on top of it. Because currently, if I recall, um, from the first time we were able to attach um, phys physicalized cargo on cargo containers, we, we have been able to attach weapons, et cetera, et cetera, on, mm -hmm. the cargo con uh, on the cargo grids, albeit with a few bugs, of course, because some of them spawn you know, upside down and all those things. Mm -hmm. But either way, it, it, it was nice to see, and I'm very curious to see um, what more they can do with it in terms of making it a, a very robust. And of course, the other question is with respect to the instance hangers, which is the reason why I'm really excited to test it. Um, you know, you have persistent hangers and then you have an instance hanger that isn't persistent. Mm -hmm. So when you actually leave the hanger, um, and let's say you were to accidentally um, leave some of your cargo or <laughs> anything really mm -hmm. out in that instance hanger and not mm -hmm. persistent, well, let's call it temporary hanger. Right, right. right. Um, what happens? Do they auto store the stuff or do you leave, lose it for good? So maybe, of course, maybe they'll just leave it up to the player. Say, hey, you know, this is temporary. It's not your persistent hanger like you have at your landing, at your home location. Yeah. Please store your stuff back into the freight elevator or wherever before you leave this hanger. Otherwise, it's going to go poof. That's a good so question. That's the other thing I'm That's very about. scary. Yeah. It's a, it's a good question because the, um, and for those of you who remember, just a quick refresher, I'm, I'm not trying to preach to the choir. I just want to make sure we distinguish instance versus persistent. Your persistent hanger will be just like when you log into the game right now, you say, I want to Hort Lorville to be my home. That's where your persistent hanger will be. That will not be spread out throughout the universe. It'll be at that one, that's your home base, which is what you call it now. And that access to being able to pull vehicles, pull inventory, cargo, whatever it is, can all take place at that location. To your point, Calrati, I fly over to New Babbage and I happen to be doing some, I don't know, maybe I'm doing some stuff with my vulture, right? And I decide to unload that stuff there at the hangar and I forget. Your question is, what happens to it? Does it jump from, because it's not going to be stored in that hangar once I leave. Does it go into the item bank? You know, is that is that a factor? Because even if even if even if that's the case, in a way, I could almost make that place a home base for me. So the question is, like right now, you guys know you can leave loot wherever you want to in the universe. The item banks are going to be where your loot is. But what about when you're talking about cargo? You know what I mean? Like a 16 SCU box or 32 SCU box. Um, if I leave that there, what happens to it? Does it disappear? Does it go into the item bank? You know. Because if it goes into the item bank, I can treat the item bank just like any other place, except for it's just not in my hangar. You know, um, I don't I don't know how they would do that. You know, like when we go to the shops right now, when you buy stuff, you can, you know, you can buy something, you can send it to your ship. Maybe that's what the item bank will do too in a hangar that's a not a you know, not a persistent hangar. So I don't know. That's a good question, Cal Roddy. Um I had a question about security. And I'm glad in this one he said something because the other video didn't talk about this. But how do you keep people from coming down to your hangar? And I noticed he said you can invite people to your hangar. So I'm going to work under the assumption that if people are in your group or you have to send them an invitation in order for them to get access to your hangar. Because they said your stuff can stay laying around. I mean, obviously, it's when you're there. But I'm assuming that the only way people can come to your hangar is if you invite them, that they can't just come strolling downstairs. But then earlier, CIG did talk about people being able to sneak in, right? If they jumped in the elevator with your people. So I don't know. What, what do you guys think? 
Well, I guess it's a lot. It's a lot like like when you when you spawn a ship in in your hangar. Mm -hmm. you, know, you, you go to ASOP terminal. You spawn. You go. You go run in, and then somebody might be just hanging out in that in that in that hangar. Yeah, and then sneak on your ship. But if it's so your persistent now, hangar, they they it, can't get to it right without you. Right, because it doesn't. It's not. It's not there. Until right until you, you get there. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. So. Um, so I'm saying, can somebody so, creep in? Like, if me and Cal Roddy are coming down, mm -hmm. do we make sure there's not this third guy in the elevator is with our group? You know what I mean? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. You know, and it's, it's. I mean, it'll be pretty hard for somebody to do that, but you know, with it, with enough uh, ingenuity, <laughs> you know, somebody somebody's gonna do it. Yeah, you know? yeah, they're gonna jump in the elevator for sure. They go right before the door closes. Yeah. They're gonna jump in, right? Yeah. Yeah, I'm curious right. to see how they're gonna do that uh, with the elevator and security. I really am. Yeah. Um, okay. All right, well, listen, guys, let's take a look at part two, and then we're going to jump in a little bit more into the conversation here. So basically, uh, NAPU is uh, what we like to call it. Uh, it was like USPU before. We had Intel PU. We had the Austin guys. I'm not sure if they add an acronym. So I guess North America PU is made sense. Do you like NAPU as a name? Yeah, it's, it's all right. It sounds like NAPU almost. Why should we care about cargo? Or why should you care about cargo? And to me, the answer is because I never thought of Star Citizen as just a FPS. In fact, I would say the thing that makes me the most excited about Star Citizen is that it's a whole world of people who have their own ambitions and goals and they're interested in different things. And to me, cargo represents a way to get into the world to play with your friends in order to engage with other players even in this dynamic way. You have all of this player interaction that comes around hauling the cargo, dealing with pirates, hiring people to defend yourself from pirates. And it generates this whole kind of economy and, and simulation of player interactivity. And I think this kind okay, of Rooster. thing is Thanks. at the root of what makes Star Citizen special. Today in the game, we've had all of this, what I call instantaneous cargo. When you're in the real physical world, things don't just appear and disappear in your car, right? A person going to Costco, they don't just click on a few things in the kiosk and it magically appear at the back trunk of their car. That kind of magic way of, of opening inventory is going to disappear and it's going to become that warehouse inventory. With these new changes with the freight platform and the cargo grid and inventory container boxes and needing to move things manually with the tractor beam, it is going to add a certain amount of friction into that whole experience. The benefit of manual loading is really that you get to choose how you organize your cargo and how you get to load it on your ship. You know, you've got one guy that's loading the bigger boxes with the vehicles. You have your other friend that's loading in, you know, your ship weapons. Another maybe is loading up commodities for a long haul. And you can organize that, snap everything to the cargo grid, tractor beam it onto your ship and head out with your friends for an adventure across the verse. The cargo career is at the heart of what Star Citizen aims to achieve. Not just a universe of exploration and conflict, but one of commerce and opportunity as well. And last week we shared the first part of its next iteration with a discussion of freight elevators, instanced and persistent hangars, varied cargo boxes, and a new cargo grid that'll expand the possibilities of your ships in new and exciting ways. So here in part two, we're gonna dive a little deeper into the systems underpinning it all starting with how we intend inventory to evolve next. And speaking of inventory changes, this leads us to what I think is one of the other very big transformations that's happening with these new sets of features. So instead of having something like a uh, building, you actually have a place where you can go to put your items, to store them, and you know that it's safe uh, while you go out and do future travels. One thing that we want to do is really kind of physicalize inventory in terms of you need to be at a specific location to use that inventory and management. So this gives us a lot of benefit uh, across the game where you know exactly where your stuff is and where to get it and where to go to organize it. 
Now you'll be accessing that inventory via the freight platform and the hangers. You'll be using the freight platform to put it down. If you want to take something out, you use the freight platform to take it out. And you can use these inventory container boxes that, that I mentioned previously in order to optimize that kind of hauling. Let's say you realize you have a lot of guns that you want to take with you. Well, in the kiosk inventory management screen, you can move those items into a single box to aggregate them together so that you just use one pass with the tractor beam in order to move it all onto your ship. It also means that you'll have the ability to haul larger things in the game more efficiently by taking them and putting them into these larger boxes, such as ship items that maybe you purchased or stole. If you want to do some kind of uh, underground assaulting mission, you just bring your big guns and everything, and you also load that into your ship. So everything is going to be really physicalized and no more kind of magic stuff popping here and there. In addition to the freight platform access, we want to give players the ability to access smaller items without having to go to a hangar. And for this, we're going to add some kind of what I call an item bank. And this is just like a secure box kind of access point in the landing zone so that you don't have to go to a hangar and it'll look very similar to the, the other personal inventory interactions. And you can move smaller items around there, such as handguns or meta pins. But again, tying it to a physical location in the game and getting rid of this kind of magic. We're taking that and also applying it to the inventory in the vehicles. Right now in the game, you can hit I while you're inside of a vehicle and you'll see a similar kind of invisible magical inventory for the vehicle. We're gonna be getting rid of that and instead replacing it with a combination of access points like glove compartments in the ship, as well as those inventory container boxes so that you'll still be able to haul personal items and larger vehicle parts between locations in the game, but you'll have to do it in a way that's physically tied to actual entities that are attached to the cargo grid, as well as exposing it in a way for people to be able to reclaim them from a wreckage or maybe even pirate. So lots of changes coming with everything being physicalized, everything stored in boxes, and no more magic bag of holding. But how will you inventory your inventory? Well, that's where the new hangar kiosk comes into play. Freight elevators are going to be implemented as an access point inside of player hangars. And you'll use a kiosk to interact with the freight platform in order to call things up from your inventory or to put things into your inventory. The player controls the freight elevator through the freight elevator kiosk because we have to coordinate between three different doors. The kiosk is what determines when the door should open, when the door should close, when the cargo get loaded and all that stuff. So that is the physical thing that's basically gonna bring up cargo for you and then also like take cargo from you when you sell it. The kiosk is going to be the center point of the hangar. This is really where you will you'll manage everything. So it's not just the cargo stuff that you manage through the kiosk. You will be able to manage your inventory, uh, basically bringing up the stuff, sending it back. It's also going to be those small items. You also going to have to have some sort of uh, inventory box that you will be able to, to interact with, to put stuff in it. Basically, everything is going to go through that kiosk. So everything is central to the kiosk. It's easy to see how all of this will redefine the open sandbox experience at the core of Star Citizen's persistent universe. But what if a cargo career isn't for you? What if you just like to run the occasional mission? Don't want to spend your time loading boxes or prefer speculating on the market economy around it all? Well, the purview of Napu is to construe for you, too. We are going to have missions in the game that latch on to this. So for example, you'll be able to take a mission where a corporation like Crusader will ask you to haul their cargo for them. And this is an opportunity for players to engage with this kind of gameplay of hauling and manual loading without having such a large uh, investment in the game. Right now, cargo has largely been required to have a large investment, speculation, and risk on the part of the players. And where we're going is we're going to be reducing that risk for certain sets of players who don't want to engage with that kind of speculation while still allowing them to have this kind of fun, manual loading, kind of packing experience. 
On the other hand, if the thing that you are more interested in is that kind of speculation and that kind of trading and wheeling and dealing and trying to just cut the best profit, we are still going to have a certain amount of automated loading in the game. It just won't be instantaneous. You'll have to use a service. It'll cost a little bit more. It'll take time. You won't have access to your ship while it's being loaded. But, you know, depending on the kinds of gameplay that you're looking for, if you enjoy that more physical kind of gameplay, we'll have that there for you. If you're more interested in just kind of profit trading, we'll also have a path for you there too. So I think in this kind of new world of, of cargo and, and all these new features that we're coming out with, we're trying to make sure that for all the people that are looking to play with this, that there's something there for them. And of course, all of this comes with a large amount of economy tuning that's going to need to rebalance things now that we have physicalized movement, guaranteed friction on the transactions. So all of these things we can use to rebalance it and hopefully make it to where if you're interested in taking high risks, there's a path for you to maybe get a better profit. Vice versa, if you don't want to, there's still a way for you to be able to play the game and not be overly punished. That's going to be an ongoing endeavor and we'll talk more about that as we get closer to release. So lots of changes coming to Star Citizen with the work being done by the North America Persistent Universe team. So let's go ahead and let them bring it all home and see if we can't maybe just sneak in one more tiny big addition people have been waiting for to. Another big thing that we're working on is unique item recovery. This is something that the fans have been asking for for a long time and we're hoping that it's really going to finally resolve this problem of losing items or losing items mid-mission. It looks like a simple subject, but there's a lot of little things to think about, like people buying some, some gear, giving to their friend and claiming back what happens to the version that was uh, given to their friends, or even like if your body gets looted by somebody, how do we want to kind of cope with that? So one of the ideas that we have running right now is that you would have a lost and found within your hab. So if you're playing, your mission crashes, you lose your progress, but you can go back to your hab, restart that mission, grab that item, and continue on where you left off. And we're really hoping to apply this to subscriber items and other unique items as well. I think in the long run, we have a lot of plans. Just really trying to build out a feature set that can incorporate a lot of different ships that can incorporate your teams, that allows you to be more in control. It allows you to try to find the best ways that work for you um, and your group. And right now, that's the main thing we're working on. Our universe uh, is big. We're gonna keep building more systems, more planets, and we really wanna find a way to make that exciting. We wanna have you take goods from one planet to the other, explore places that you haven't seen. Loading up, organizing, all of your gear, all of your equipment, having it snapped to a grid, uh, keeping everything safe. And it's a huge part of Star Citizen and where we want to go with the game. That is a summary of that we're working towards for physicalized cargo. Now, this is going to be an ongoing process, starting with the first set of changes coming out with 320, automated loading in the whole, with the whole C and the new packing system that's coming out there. But We'll continue this work of adding these things like freight elevators, hangar instancing, persistent hangars, inventory containers, all of that, and continuing into subsequent releases. So I hope you enjoyed hearing about it, and I think I'll be back a few more times to get into more details about those things. I look forward to seeing what they're developing in the future and, and then uh, also showing it off to the, the community and team. We'll stop it right there, right there, right there. Um, thoughts, Nomad, let me go to you first this time around. Um, this is, uh, this is, this is just really exciting. Um, I think that focusing on making things, uh, the, the, the thing they, they always keep saying that they keep mentioning is that magic back of holding, mm -hmm. you know, I'm a D and D player. And, you know, and, you know, you just always have stuff available and, and, you know, you just like an infinite mm -hmm. inventory Yeah. to make this much more a seamless experience to, to get, to manipulate your items, to, uh, 
to work with your with work work with your inventory mm -hmm. to uh to um I, I it's it's hard for me to put it in, in, into words. It's 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 going to be a much more realistic experience mm -hmm. to to live in this in 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 this world with with being able to take uh, I, I'm 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 having a hard time I'm having a hard time get it's go go to go to Calrani and I'll, and I'll <laughs> okay, be right back. Okay, right, no problem, <laughs> no <laughs> problem. So much stuff going yeah. on. Well, I'm thinking about something you said earlier because for those people who don't play D and D. You know, the magic bat of holding, the well, the thing that it does is it removes this idea of physicality, right? Because mm -hmm. the item is always accessible, right? No matter right. where you are. And this does change the way we have to think about the game because literally, it's like if you leave your wallet at home, right? You left it at home, right. you know what I mean? It, you don't have it. Right. And so the question becomes, well, what do I do now? I'm, I'm, I've, I've driven 30 minutes to go here. My wallet's at home. So now I've either got to figure out something different or maybe I can't accomplish what it is I wanted to do because I needed my license, right? Where with a magic bag of holding, you know, it's like, <laughs> make a difference where you're at. I just reach in and pull it out, right? So I, I think we kind of get where you're going with that. How make, this is a huge change for us as players, right? Because we've really, I mean, let's face it, we've gotten used to being able to access stuff you know, pretty quickly, you know. But I'll go to Cal Roddy and I'll come back to you if there's something else you want to say about that. Go ahead, Cal Roddy. Yeah, well, firstly, thank you, Bando. Bando! Thank you, Bando. Yeah, so, I, you know, Chad uses that word friction um, from time to time when talking about this, and it is true that it's going to, you know, create that sense of friction with respect to, you know, persons who wouldn't, wouldn't have been accustomed uh, to this kind of physicality with respect to the logistics behind the cargo and, and, and all those things, mm -hmm. uh, particularly those who've never need, ever played um, open world games where, or yeah, open world survival games, for example, mm -hmm. um, where a lot of these physical inventories are located, right? Um, but I do think that this aspect is going to also encourage uh, Increased consequences in terms of um, not necessarily bad consequences, but in terms of logistics, right? It's right. going to increase the importance of that kind of aspect in the game. Yeah. Um, and at the same time, it's also going to make us, I think, at least based on some of the games that I've played where this is involved, it's going to give us that extra sense of responsibility and planning, right? So sure, at the same time, some of us may think, okay, we have all these things in our inventory. Um, how is this even this is going to be a headache right mm -hmm. but of course this is where when this comes into the game this is where our testing and our feedback with respect to manually loading the auto loading of course the auto loading is only going to be for now if i recall in the trading and we'll see that in the next um next um in isc that, that we're going to play a little later on mm -hmm. but um with respect to you know the fear of having to manage all of this all of these items it may create a bit of a shift, you know, um, where hoarding may um, may be a thing. Mm -hmm. uh, because personally, you know, um, when you go to a bunker, we know a certain go mob who likes to hoard a whole <laughs> bunch of stuff. I do wonder how, whether or not this is actually going to drive his decision making with respect to, um, yeah. you know, packing things. All right. Um, well, let me ask so you a question. Very interesting. Let me ask you a question to that point. Yeah. You know, how do you tie this into the economy? Like right now, to, to, to Nomad's point, even now, our inventory to a certain degree is almost unlimited, right? Yeah. So what happens if now you're charged a fee for mm. what you decide to store, right? Yeah. I mean, I mean I'm, I'm, I'm tying this into economy, right? The reasons why you need to go out and make money. What if there is a monthly storage fee, you know, for me to be able to store X number of this? If I've stored up to this much, if I want more storage, I have to pay a higher tax, right? Or I have to pay some fee in order to access the item bank, right? Or the item bank says you can hold only hold up to 100 at this point as a guest. But if you want to, you know, pay a subscription, you know, to put in 500 units, then you have to pay this much every week or whatever. You know what I'm saying? There are things that they can do. Because, I mean, I've played games where you store stuff in different places. All you just do is run over there and go get it and come back. But I'm yeah. saying if they want to tie this into 
in a real holistic way so that the economy is impacted reasons why because a lot of times people can constantly you know bring in income and eventually gets to that point where you don't have to spending money is not a big deal but if you've got these constant things that are running all the time that you've always got to be feeding them you know kind of like a what's those places called a a storage place. You know, when you go to a storage unit, you don't pay your storage yeah. bill that month. They lock that sucker mm-hmm. up. Man, what happens if they do something like that, right? You know, you can't exactly. get to your stuff, you know. Yeah. There's some stuff that they could pull out here, you know, to, to drive economy. Uh, as you mentioned, drive logistics. You know, as you mentioned, Nomad, really thinking about what it is you're taking out there. You know, there's a lot of stuff that they could do. Your storage yes. wars. There you go. Thank you, Tilted. Storage wars. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Um, yeah, it's what it's going to do it's going to it's going to slow the game down mm-hmm. but in a good way mm-hmm. you know what i mean it's not like it's not it's not going to be cumbersome mm-hmm. but it's going to force you to consider all of your all of your volume mm-hmm. where, what you're going to put where mm-hmm. um uh how how much you can put in 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 each cargo container mm-hmm. you know so so you really have to think about how how you're going to move your 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 cargo and and your and all of your logistics mm-hmm. in a very realistic way which is uh which you know and and it's also going to make it easier mm-hmm. to to uh to have to have your 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 cargo manifest because there's going to be limits to how much you can put in each mm-hmm. container. Mm-hmm. You can't just fill it up with everything right that, that you ever had. You know, you're, you're going to be like, okay, I can only fit 15 of these things mm-hmm. here, and I can take this con- this container and put it here. Right, and there's going to be a, there's going to be a whole a whole dynamic and a whole maybe even profession mm-hmm. that comes out of that you know a, a, a cargo cargo master in mm-hmm. in uh a load master in mm-hmm. the in the military yeah that's their whole job right right Balance you know and out. so you yeah, it's essentially being a load master yeah you know in on ships on on cargo uh it's 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 gonna it's gonna make it really a realistic uh, a, re- a realistic profession mm-hmm. that you nearly ha- really need to be smart and take time mm-hmm. in, in, in doing. It's going to help your organization skills. Absolutely. Yeah. I think it'll definitely make us more thoughtful, like you said, as yes, to what we're doing. Um, I know like right now, one of the things I've been doing recently, some of the guys was with me yesterday saw this when we were out playing. Uh, I take a, 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 a Anvil Pisces and I put four one SCU boxes in, two on this side, two on this side. One box has nothing but weapons in it. Another one has nothing but medical stuff in it. You know, med pins, all this stuff. The other box has nothing but the multi-tools and stuff like that. Another has armor in it. And I load those up. And like, if I, I think it's like 50 multi-tools. I forget how many multi-tools I can have. I've had, it's ridiculous how many multi-tools I've had over the years. But it does, you know, get to a point where I've maxed out. That box is full now. When that box is full, I have to take it and go sell it, right? Um, and, and, and I can't wait till CIG puts labels, allows you to label the boxes, um, please, you know, because yeah, I got these four great boxes and I have to remember, is remember which one, what's in which one. Right. Um, but That's yeah, the, I mean, I'm just using that on a very small, I use that anvil Pisces just to do bunker busting. Right. And those four boxes accommodate what it is I want to do. And if I need to, maybe I'll just take one box down with me, but when I come up, I sort all that stuff out, put it in the different boxes and I roll on. Right. But now we're talking about what happens when I get back to the hangar, right? I want to be able to just not go in my inventory and have to yank down these individual weapons, but I've got a box with all the weapons right there. I bring them in, maybe even to the point where, as you mentioned, maybe I've got these things categorized. This box is nothing but S71s. This one's nothing but P4s. You know, this one's nothing but grenades. You know, we can really start thinking about how we set up stuff. So then when we want to do missions and somebody says, what do you need? Right, because you've done this before, right? You go out with some folks. What do you need me to bring? You know, somebody says, "Oh, I need some such such ammo, or I need this." You know, now you just grab that box, boom, throw it on, and go. You know, entirely different way of looking at inventory. You know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. the The final thing that I wanted to touch on with respect to that was the um, the cargo inventory that they had spoken about, mm-hmm. and it was only up until when I started playing Death Stranding that I that I really, really realized and appreciated. 
um, how beneficial it is to interact with multiple inventories at the same time. Yes, we have it in, to some extent mm -hmm. when we are in a ship, for instance, and um, you know we want to move stuff between our physical inventory to global inventory and in our ship inventory. Mm -hmm. But what if you, you know, what happens when you have, uh, for instance, two SU boxes around you, and uh, Technically speaking, you should be able to move between these, but at this, but at the moment, we can only interact with one SU box, mm -hmm. maybe our inventory. But you know, yep. when playing um, Death Stranding, I was able to interact with my inventory, the um, mm. the, the vehicle as well, and the area in which I was in. So mm -hmm. being able to interact with these surrounding boxes as well at the same time, yeah. given that they're, given their close proximity, will also add, in my opinion, a good quality of life when that comes. Oh, you, hey, listen, time-wise, you're right, because last night I had to move it from the box and put it into the planetary <laughs> inventory to get ready to take it from the planetary to put it in another box. I had to do, like you said, two yep. steps where it could have been just one step. And and yep. time-wise, I mean, we don't think about it, because I know some people said earlier in chat that this can become very tedious and cumbersome. But as the system gets refined, it won't be. Because originally, we all thought that we were going to be moving one-eighth SCU boxes Right, mm -hmm. you six hundred and fifty two yeah. of them suckers <laughs> off of a C two. Nah, nah, nah. You know, I mean, however many. You know what I mean. But once we saw, oh, they're giving us thirty two SCU boxes. Oh, that's going to be much easier to do. What I thought was going to take two hours is now only going to take eleven minutes. You know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah. we, it's it, it's going to get refined, guys. Don't you know? Again, we're just at tier two. It, it's they're going to keep refining it, and refining it, and refining it, and making it systematic. Let me throw something at both of you guys on this one. They talked about the loading and unloading on both of these videos, but they talked about. You can either do it manually for those people who are the load master types, but they said you could also just have it done automated too. But automated comes with the cost. And it, it was interesting that they said it also comes with a time factor. And I, my question to you is, do you think the time factor will be greater if you pay for it or less if you pay for it? I think you get what you pay for. So I think it'll probably be less if you pay for it. Doesn't it? So do you think it, I mean, do you think that they'll make it like, I can, I, if you pay us 10,000, well, I'm just picking a random number. But if you pay 5,000 AUEC or UEC, we'll load you in 15 minutes. If you pay us 10,000 AUEC, we'll load you in seven minutes. Do you think they'll scale it so that people can choose how fast they want it? You know what I mean? It's kind of like when you want to do your priority mail or if you want to do first class mail. I mean, because because the incentive, there has to be some incentive, right? Because if it takes, if it's faster for me to load it, I'm not going to do manual loading. If it's worth it for the price, why would I do manual? Just go ahead and pay it. Or is it better to have my friends do it? And that's more better. Which one? How do you balance the incentive between the two? Sure, there are going to be those people who don't want to spend money because they're cheap. <laughs> just kidding. Or they just, you know, they, maybe they're just starting out. They don't have enough money to pay for it. But they said it's going to come with a cost. And I'm wondering if that cost is going to be, you got to have pockets in order to do it that way but you also don't want to turn off people if they don't if that's not their gameplay but they want to be able to load their ship up how do you balance that and you guys got any thoughts on that or ideas and chat feel free to toss in your ideas right there kb says the cheaper to cook at home <laughs> than doordash okay true. so it's true I'm very happy to be that's here. true <laughs> cheaper to do cheaper to load it yourself i could i could buy that for a dollar yavin five thank you for that i appreciate that uh, star wars reference thank you very much there appreciate that what do you guys think about that the time versus money thing oh, well man. it's it, it's it's sort of like when you call up a ship from an asap terminal yeah you know you you could either pay to get it quicker mm -hmm. or be patient and let and let the timer you know go out and when when you have to you know when you have to uh uh Wait for like the insurance. Okay. Remember, um, if you don't have money, then you just got to be patient and wait for the timer to to to, to run down, and then you get your ship. Okay. Or if you have the money, you pay, and you shorten that time. Okay. What about yeah. you, Cal Roddy? What do you think? You think they'll do just a single that. tier, or do you think they'll do multiple tiers with paying? It could be multiple because I remember one of the um, conceptual images that Ben Dorsey had shown on Spectrum one time, uh, had the accommodation of multiple NPCs, right? But mm -hmm. at the same time, we can't expect there to be an infinite scale of um, NPCs, or when I say NPCs, like e even if it's not NPCs, um, you know, before they come online, we can't expect there to be a multiple, or sorry, an infinite scale to speed it up to 
as much as possible, mm -hmm. depending on the location, depending on um, what type of cargo. Um, good point. Know, depending on a whole bunch of different things, it could go up to a particular point. That's a good to, point. They, I don't mean to cut you off. Remember, they yeah. did say in this last week's show, and I want to say that because you're because only because you mentioned it. They said that places that were much more about trading, it would mm. be faster, and places yep. that weren't, it would take longer. So, to exactly. your point, I want to mention that. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, quite true. And yet, just in conclusion, as a result, that's also, and we're going to see, you know, we we'll definitely talk about it when we look at the other ISC as well, um, where they talk about those automatic loading. We'll definitely, it, it will definitely drive um, what type of ships go to that location um to do those trade uh, the, to do that cargo loading mm -hmm. um and also encourage or discourage persons loading and unloading cargo by themselves when it yeah. um you know when it comes to the logistics behind the automated loading versus asking persons for help mm -hmm. so, yeah. yeah hey guys just so you'll know i mean listen i know that's not everybody's gameplay but i i, I you know I, i'm always fascinated with the fact that people sometimes don't get that there are people who enjoy what, what we would consider mundane you know yep. there are there are people who will just enjoy that fact of hanging out and you know getting their inventory together that's it i mean they, they, they that whole idea of loading it and loading it themselves gives them a feeling of accomplishment right and time is not a factor for them and i'm not saying it's not a factor in real life i'm saying they they consider that as game time. They don't look at it as lost time. They look at, here's something else I have to do in the game that they find fulfilling. There are other people though, who may think that loading is monotonous, it's boring, it's tedious, and I just wanna go ahead and get my stuff here and make my money. That's fine too. There are people who are in that category. So I think the fact that CIG is giving options for both sides, uh, all I'm saying is that neither I'm side- happy to be here. What I am saying is that neither side should be dismissive of the other. For the person who maybe is limited to time or just doesn't have the time to sit there and do that, CIG is providing a pathway for them to, and, they're, and they'll understand. They'll say, hey, I'm willing to pay the extra dough to make it happen faster. But then you've got the other people on the other side who are like, hey, I'm keeping my money in my pocket. <laughs> I'm going to load this thing up myself, you know. So understand that those both are both practical and realistic ways to play the game. Yeah, if a kid from last year beat Tetris after all these years, there are a bunch of different people who would love to manually load your stuff. So don't worry about it. <laughs> And that's very true. Very true. Okay. All right. So let me see. Who was that? That was Mol Molvis. Thank you very much for the follow. We truly, truly appreciate that. Thank you guys for being here. Let's go ahead and jump into this week's episode of, of ISC. This this kind of sent the rumbles through folks here uh, with them talking about what was going on with cargo. Um, but I do want to talk about something real quick. And this... Um, this subject here, and I don't know why this did this earlier, so please forgive me, gang, for um, having to fix something, because for some reason this didn't work right earlier. Um, give me one second here. Maybe it, maybe it is working. Let's see if this is working. Nope, it's not working. Okay. Hang on. Hang on, Slupe. Hang on, hang on. There. Studio 2. And this is supposed to be here. That's why it's not working. There we go. All right. Before we jump into this ISC, I want to talk about these vehicles and ships real quick, guys. Now, mind you, I'm going to, here's the, here's the, let me throw this in real quick. We're not saying this is only ships that you can carry cargo in. I only pick these ships because these are the ships that you can tell that are oriented toward moving cargo in, in relation to a hangar. Okay. I know there's a whole C and a whole D and a whole E. As uh, far as we know, we cannot load them in a hangar. Okay, those are on a docking collar, but you can do a whole A and a whole B. So that's why we have these here. As far as vehicles go, the Drake Mule, the Ursa uh, Rover, we do have that. Is there any other vehicle that I'm missing, guys, that you can load boxes into? Because I couldn't think. We, I asked some people last night. I think that's it, right? I Chat, is there anything it, else yeah. I'm missing? Okay. All right. Um, the Argo Raft. We know we can do the Argo Raft. Uh, well, we, we got to get we, we haven't got the ship shit. Now I'm gonna tell you why I didn't put the cutty black on. And give me give me a second before I get there. Um, the the merchantman, the crusader, uh, C1 and C2, the Drake caterpillar, the Gatak Raylan, uh, the Misk freelancer, the Hulse A B and the Max, and the Taurus and the Zeus C L. Um, the Spirit, yeah, it's up there. The C1, they're up there. We got those there. Uh, the G12, 
let me tell you why let me tell you why there were some vehicles we didn't put on the list gang the uh msr it's a good pick that did come up on last night but i didn't use it because it's actually designed to be a data runner now it doesn't mean it can't carry cargo same thing with the cutty black cutty black is a multi-use ship yes you can put cargo in it but i'm talking about ships that are not multi-rolled but ships that are geared toward cargo okay so that's the reason why we have these here we could put cargo in anything i could say a carrick if i want to but that's not its main function it can carry cargo but i wanted to use these as talking points for what we're looking forward to doing because these are ships that these are ships that people who are into cargo probably own okay if you're into cargo you probably own or want to own most of these ships up here the only one i had a question about and i asked this last night was the banu merchantman and in the Gatak, those were two ships we had problems with um the banu merchantman we thought yeah my only concern was with the new hangers that they talked about i'm wondering if that sucker is going to fit in the hangar it's not as it's as, it's 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 not longer than an 890 or a carrick it can fit lengthwise but widthwise it's pretty big so i'm kind of curious to see if that's going to fit in a hangar um the other thing is um the Gatak Raylan, its cargo pods are up like five stories four or five stories and I'm curious as how loading sequence is on that. Now, some people suggested, hey, maybe, you know, they got that freaky levitation stuff. Maybe there's something you push and those things come down. But I don't know. Do you guys know? We looked at the brochure. We looked at animations. We looked at all types of stuff last night trying to figure out how the heck do you load a Gatak Raylan? Do either you guys have any, any ideas? No, not a clue. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah, I know the BMMs wings sweep in, but I still I don't know if that width is big. That thing's huge, man. It's huge. I, I'm hoping it does. Don't get me wrong, fast card. I'm hoping it it does. You know, I'm just not sure. You know, we'll have to see. We're it's on the list. You know, we're hoping that it does fit in there. We're hoping that it does. Okay. Um, and yeah, the wings don't fold up. Only the tips fold up, y'all. The whole wing doesn't fold up on that thing. Um, okay. So these ships here, uh, Nomad, do you own any of these? Uh, I have the uh, the uh, the C the the uh, the, the the cargo of the spirit the C two the, the big one or the small one. Um, C one's the no, small one. C two is the big one. Oh. oh, oh! I thought this was the uh, the the spirit. Ooh, I spelled the, Crusader the, the wrong. Crusader. Lord, I, yeah, I'm asking which one do you own? Do you own both or oh. one of them? No, no, I just I just have the cargo variant. Yeah, but okay, but there's there's a, there's a small cargo and a big cargo of the spirits. Oh, oh, the big the big the big you, cargo. You the one the, that's dedicated to big cargo. The big one. All right, you got then you got yes. the Hercules, the big one. Okay, okay. Or do you have the spirit? Is the Hercules spirit? I'm sorry. I know I'm keep making confusing things here. I'm sorry. It's, it's on me. It's on <laughs> no, no. me, not you. I have you. the C one. I have the C one spirit. Okay, you got the C one spirit. Okay, I got you. Okay. Yes. And yes. Uh, Cal Roddy, what about you? Any of these? Yeah, courtesy of Soul Citizen, I, I, I won the whole A, so I have that shot to my account now. <laughs> the whole A, okay. All right. Um, I've got, I don't, I own the, uh, what have I got? I got the Merchantman, C1, Raylan, all A and B. That's it. Yeah. Okay. Um, Okay, so those are the ones that we're looking at for carriers. Let's go ahead and get into the showpiece here. Um, boom. And I think this first topic we're going to be talking about is... What is the first one there, uh, Cal Roddy? I'm sorry, my schedule thing here is kind of crazy. Uh, persistent hangers. Yes. Okay, these are from the uh, episode that just came out, guys. The to and fro cargo with cargo. So that's we're going to do some little excerpts from each one and talk about them as we go. So let's take a look at this first one. So let's start with persistent hangers. What are they and what does that mean? So a persistent hanger is an instance hanger that is going to be assigned to you whenever you select your home location when logging into the game for the first time for a patch. When that happens, what we do is we determine the largest ship that you have and then entitle to you a persistent hanger that's of the size needed to facilitate that ship. Whenever you go into that hanger into the game, that hanger at your home location is always your hanger. 
and you'll be able to use it like your home. You'll be able to keep things in the hangar. You'll be able to leave things around. You can invite friends in. You can treat it like your own little I'm oasis. Happy to be here. Okay. We are happy to have you here. Let me turn this volume back down on this. All right. So that's persistent hangers. Um, Cal Roddy, you mentioned earlier, you said that you don't think they'll be happening in 323. And I know there are some people who are kind of concerned or thinking about it. Um, is it just the fact that you don't think any of it will come in? Or do you think that it'll be some zero iteration of it? Or just it just won't happen probably till later? What? Which aspect are you, for, uh, are you talking about? I, I, I thought you said I, earlier you didn't think that something was going to come in with the hangers. There was something I thought you mentioned you didn't think it would be in 323. Mm. Or maybe I misunderstood you. Maybe I misunderstood myself too. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> okay. Never mind. Never mind. Okay. So we all know what persistent hangers are now. Um, one of the things that I thought was interesting was this idea. Of, I don't know if you guys have been noticing that weapons like torpedoes and stuff have been laying around. What does that mean? Does that mean that now when we order and buy that stuff, it's going to come like that? Like you're going to order like, like right now we order it, it goes on your ship. You know what I mean? What's yeah. what's the scoop? I mean, you're not in the ship, but you know, you just throw on they've got this stuff laying around, these torpedoes and, and all this stuff. What what do you think's gonna happen with that? Is, is, is it gonna be like a pallet system or or are they gonna come inside uh a a a, a container box? And that's what I'm wondering. Out? Yeah, that's what I'm wondering. Because, like, right now, we can load, manually load. You know, we can offload missiles and stuff off of our ships. I'm wondering, is that what's going to happen? Now, when we buy them, they'll arrive in a box, and then we have to manually attach and fill them. And when you go out into space, you know, if you want to put some missiles on your ship, because they showed ships with them in their cargo yeah. areas. Yeah. So, for this, for 323, um, they talked about it being an option where, for instance, uh, let's say you want to load these items onto your ship. You, from the... Um, from the terminal in the persistent hangar, uh, you will be able to store them in a, a cargo container mm -hmm. once you have or purchase the cargo container. Um, but of course, in this in this case, we saw where they're physically loading these items as well without a cargo container. So I guess they'll give us the option. Um, and I think it went back to, and I remember why you had asked that question, where I wasn't, I didn't think that this aspect was coming in. Where, for instance, when it comes to snapping or mm. having these items physically snapped to the cargo container. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. You know, the stacking of these physical items may, be, may seem a bit off compared to using cargo containers, right? I got so, you. Of course, the only concern that we'll have in this case, and we, we see it also right now, is if you were to uh, um, you know, strip an item, be it a missile or a weapon, from an item port from a ship, and you put it onto the cargo grid, um, most of the time it doesn't snap, and as a result, physics gets a little iffy mm -hmm. uh, so as a result um that will also lead to you know us being encouraged perhaps to storing these things in the terminal within uh, cargo containers to them load them so but this that wouldn't stop them from maybe allowing us to store um to spawn these items physically outside of the cargo boxes via the freight elevators and, and wanting us and giving us the freedom to physically load them so maybe mm -hmm. we could just continue to give us the freedom for that okay I got you. I got you. Uh, Nomad, any thoughts you have before we move on to the next point? Yeah, yeah. He brings up an in interesting point. I, I heard somebody, I think he mentioned some, uh earlier about, you know, people are going to be taking, like, bodies and putting them <laughs> on the, on the, <laughs> you know, or, 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 or Picos. Yeah. You know, um, you see, you see, you see them all there, right there. Yeah. In Picos. You start, you start snapping them onto the grid. Then how, how does all that start to work? Did it, is, is it like a standard, uh, size? Like even, even if you do decide to take, you know, some guy's going to take a body and just like put it up. Is it just going to be a rectangle that just takes up a standard rectangle or is it going to be, is it going to flop around? Is it going to, you know, you, you start, you start getting into those type of situations where how is everything going to fit in these snap cargo cargo groups now weirdly enough i don't know when they mentioned about having bodies he mentioned about having them in the hangars i don't know if that's an issue for the freight elevator or the grids there now, like right now when you put a body on a ship it just kind of sits there it doesn't go anywhere or right. anything like that 
Um, I'm not sure if there's, I don't know if bodies are snappable is basically what I'm saying. I don't uh, know if okay. they're snappable. Um, people throw them in ships all the time and lug them around and throw them out the back and all that other stuff. Uh, sure. But he did mention about the fact that I think he was really referencing the fact that things will be persistent now. So he said, if somebody wants to just leave bodies in their hangar, you know, yeah. they'll be laying, they'll be laying there when they come back where normally now they'll disappear, you know, something like that. So, okay. Um, okay. This is this next one here. So let's talk about for these personal hangers, how do you actually get into them? You can make a request via ATC for landing. And when we do that, we will check to see if you have any personal hangers entitled to you. You'll be able to enter in using largely the same methodology that you do now, land, and then you can just hang out in there. As far as what can you actually do with your personal hanger and what kinds of things can you decorate with it, what we're going to do is allow you to call anything in your inventory up via that freight elevator. You can pick it up off the freight elevator either with your hands or using the tractor beam and just screw it about your location however you pick. Also in the hangars, you'll notice several new kiosks. We have the freight elevator kiosk, which has a brand new uh, UI and uh, inventory system to deal with uh, large volumes of cargo. You're okay. Um, loading into your personal hangar. For those of you who have all that flare stuff, this is going to be your time to break out everything you got. You can <laughs> throw all that stuff around wherever you want. Those carts, um, are those carts practical? Do you guys think the carts that they've given us so far? I ask, I ask myself that question every time because... <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> when they showed us the the hover cart, then I was more convinced. Yeah, I guess we will see. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. It, they look cool. Yeah, but but I mean, for 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 moving stuff in, around inside, obviously, yeah. Um, but I don't know. It's. Carpe I'm, not, I'm not sure. Carpaccio said the carts are very practical as weapons of mass destruction. <laughs> <laughs> yeah they are they are a hot mess i mean i don't you know and the other thing too is like when you if they fall over on their side we don't have a way to pick them up once they go on their side they, they I, i'm i'm just not sure how i mean, don't get me wrong i'm not against the cards i'm just hoping they get them into some mode where they don't become you know the thing falls over on its side for some reason and then it's blocking you or something you know i don't, I don't know how they're going to do that you know what? I've never tried. Has anybody ever tried to use a multi-tool on those things? Can you set them back up right? Coincidentally, I have not. I, I, but I'm guessing it's possible, and I'm hoping so. But I, I never, I, it never clicked. Um, it, it never clicked for me to try. Yeah, I never thought because well, back in the day, you couldn't use your uh, multi-tool in yeah. the hangar. So I, yeah, okay. All right, for science, y'all. Somebody let us know if you can. For you science. can. Blackwater goes. Oh, Blackwater goes way ahead of us. BWG says, nope, you cannot. Okay. Ooh. Oh, no. All right. Oh, Captain Jones says, no, too. Okay. All right. Well, it was an idea. I thought maybe that could make them practical. Yeah, and they did it. Yeah. Okay. They tried. <laughs> All right. Let's check on this next category here. Uh, he was getting ready to go into the freight elevators. I have on the left-hand side a section that is showing the contents of the platform itself. And on the right hand side, similar inventory layout with all your armor and weapons and items. And then you decide what you want to spawn in, um, in the freight elevator. The freight elevator then comes up and then you can start doing like loading and unloading of various cargo into your ship and so on. If you're considerate about how you're loading things and you're trying to optimize your loading times, It'll give you a lot of power as far as, for example, making sure that certain kinds of things are front loaded on the platform to make your multi-crew loading as streamlined as possible. And anything that's in your inventory, you're going to be able to call up. Some things you might have to put into an inventory container box. We're talking 8, 16, 24, even 32 SU size container boxes that you can put large items in. Now you can raise that up on the platform, including in collections transfer that very quickly onto your ship, and then take them to another location. Okay, okay, okay. Freight elevators. You guys didn't see any issues with these elevators? Uh, do you think that there's going to be somebody who puts their friend in that elevator and, and sends it down? I don't know if you can do that, but I'm just... <laughs> 
I'm yeah, just kind of curious. That, that's scary. I don't know what would happen. He goes some kind of twilight zone. <laughs> Um, there were some cargo boxes that they talked about. Remember they showed us one where the end opened up that vehicles could be put inside of it? And I haven't seen that yet. Do you remember that? They were talking about transporting. I think they had put like a golf cart or something inside of one of those boxes one time. I don't know if anybody in chat remembers that. But there was one cargo box where the end opened up. And they they said you could even transport vehicles. Um, yeah. I, I mean, right now, vehicles can go on the grid. Shimpasa says, yeah, he remember. Um but yeah, transporting 32 SCU boxes is going to be interesting. I'm not sure what we would keep in 32 SCU. What, what would we keep in there? Large weapons, most likely. Um, you know, well, like weapons ship or weapons or stuff. You yeah. mean? Yeah, large, large, size fives and stuff. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't think about that. All right. But um, once again, the multi tool comes to to, to uh, the rescue with this. For those of you who hate beams, sorry about that, but you're going to need them to do this stuff here. Um, yeah. Do you think they're going to balance out? I think they did talk about this, right? They did talk about multi-tools being balanced out based on weight, right? Eventually, like the small one eventually won't be able to pick up like really big stuff. Is that still, was that still part of the game? Do you guys remember? You know, you've got the rifle version and you've got the handheld version. Yeah, yeah. And you even see that also when you're using the two different multi-tools with the tractor beam attachments well attack for the small one and the dedicated one when lifting up you know your your um gray cat ptv right um with the smaller multi-tool it's much slower compared to the dedicated multi-tool so okay. even when using um you know when they actually push further you would have some constraints such as the battery um for your dedicated oh, yeah. multi -tool also so i think that will also play a role in addition to the weight um of how long or how often and the feasibility in using one of these multi-tools uh, yeah. in the future are the batteries working now no they, they, aren't. they don't die out all right Cell. So, so that's something else to be looking forward to when you're carrying something and you start getting a warning light saying that your battery is about to run low oh man <laughs> That's <laughs> something else to worry about. Um, I, I'm, I'm also wondering about how many people are going to kill people um, moving these boxes around, you know, not seeing them, you know. Oh, yeah. And uh, giving somebody the Elka Bong with one of these boxes. I'm, I know that's going to probably happen, too. <laughs> All right. Let's go on to this next one here. And that's the uh, the item bank. In your personal hangar, you also have access to several other kiosks, starting with the item bank. Which are another form of kiosk, which you could almost consider like a small freight elevator in a way, in that you can retrieve personal items such as clothing, armor, and weapons. Because the item that's being delivered will be delivered in a tray that's in the same machine. So you interact that kind of like you interact with a loot box and you get that out. So no other player can actually physically get anything from your local inventory. And uh, these item banks can be found not just within the hangars, but also the wider locations, such as your HABs and other key areas of a location to retrieve um, your personal items. Since you can't interact with, the, with your inventory anymore at any given time, it means like we need to have enough item banks around each location so you don't block each other um, from accessing an, an, a terminal, right? It's just a quicker way to get a quick gun or a few meta pins or your armor without having to load it up from the freight elevator. Okay. Um, how do you guys think the community is going to relate to this whole idea of basically you can only carry on you what you can carry on you? Um, we're going to lose that hit the I key and you see everything in your local area. Um, <laughs> is the community ready for that? <laughs> oh boy! Oh. Yeah. yeah, that's that's a that's a good question. Uh, it's a big know. change in inventory. I mean, it's a big change because be, we've gotten be used to that accessibility. You know, I I know I have stuff in Lorville. You know what I mean? Um, but now I've got to go to this terminal. I mean, it's not that big of a deal. But what's in the terminal versus what's in my hangar is another issue. You know, um, it's something to think about. As you mentioned earlier, uh, Nomad, it makes you more thoughtful about where you put things, where you place things. I, I know knickknacks is in the Moby Glass right now, and a lot of people never use knickknacks. I've used it, and I've used it to find things, which it's not the greatest interface, but it does work when you want to find things. Um, 
some people have started using like when you guys are wearing armor you know a lot of times if you've got stuff inside your armor or in a backpack if you put it in your inventory you'll notice there's a little icon at the bottom that you can click on and you can see what's in that backpack or in that armor um but see a lot of that stuff is about to change and i'm curious as yeah. to how we're going to change with it <laughs> yeah yeah i i totally agree but you know on the bright side i think this is also what's going to drive persons from spending time in their persistent hangers or even instance hangers where these um item banks may be i would i would i would definitely say that you know even though it wasn't part of the focus for the you know past evil build mm -hmm. um you know when you check the past notes it was under not ready to be tested mm -hmm. uh, but even so when you were going through um you know the the space stations and such uh there were places where you know never used to have anything um and you you would see the item banks there yeah so it's definitely a question of okay when they open the game up to more players per location, such as what we've been testing um, with server meshing this week, as well as the population of these item banks at said locations, mm -hmm. um, as well as how often do we think we really may need to use these item banks literally anywhere in the space station versus when you're when you're ready to actually leave, i.e. your persistent hangar. Um, how well all these things are going to intermingle, you know? So I, I think ultimately it may not be too much of a big deal um, because especially since in most cases, the persistent hangar is the last point of location contact that we will be interacting with before we leave. So, so if anything, mm -hmm. our last decision making, I think will be at the persistent hangars where the item banks will be. So is the item bank a source outside of my hangar that allows me to access something in my hangar. In other words, I don't have to go all the way back to my hangar to get it. That's the first question I want to ask you. And the second question is, is the item bank its own reserve? In other words, um, I happen to go to a store and buy some stuff and I've got too many things on me. And so I decided to say, let me put this in the item bank. Is Does that become its own reserve or does it just automatically tie into my hangar? Whatever I put in there will also be in my hangar when I get down there. Is that what it is? It tied, in other words. Yeah. So if I understand it, this is an extension of the hangar. Yeah. So kind of, sort of. So anything that's not spawned, um, be it in the hangar, um, be it mm -hmm. in your hab, one at that location, let's say Seraphim, right? It will be in that global inventory. You just won't be able to anywhere click I and open up the global inventory. Okay. But it will be in that location inventory. So anytime you interact with an item bank, be it in your in your. I am very happy um, to be here. Anywhere, yeah. uh, you will be able to access it after purchasing the item. So including the persistent hangar where the where an item bank may exist as well. Okay. And I know we don't know enough about the item bank right now. Um, my question would also be, for example, I got off my 315 and I left um, a rifle on there that I wanted to sell. Am I able to go to the item bank, access the 315 from the item bank, or do I have to go back to my hangar, right? And pull it from the inventory there and bring it up. Right, so that's another thing. Um, it's the second part because um, from the notes, they did add some internal storage mm -hmm. um, from you know for some vehicles that didn't have internal storage mm -hmm. uh so for instance the terrapin apparently have internal internal storage as well mm -hmm. so that could be the case um of course that would mean that we're getting more friction where we literally have to go and spawn our ship and then get it but who knows maybe they'll wait to see how feedback is from the community before they say okay yeah let's say that perhaps you don't have to store the ship but maybe to give that kind of, um, you know, that kind of middle ground, we may need to go to the, 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 the kiosk in our, in our persistent hangar yeah. and we can interact the in, with the inventory in our ship, at that kiosk without needing to spawn. Yeah, because he inferred when you went to the item bank, he said smaller items like a med pin or a pistol. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, you know, I can't yank out my, you know, size two gun. Yeah. You know, to sell exactly. at the gun shop, yeah. right? Okay, yeah. okay. All right, so maybe there is that limitation because there is a drawer there on those machines and you basically, it's like a canteen machine. You haul up something yeah. and boosh, it comes out, right? Um, yeah. Okay, okay. So there may be a size limitation to what you can pull from there and you may have to go all the way back to the hangar. That may just have to be what you do. Yeah, you know? that's true. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's almost like a distance thing. It's like you, you, the further away you get, mm-hmm. the less access you have to that mm-hmm. to that item. Mm-hmm. You know, so it makes it it makes it a little more realistic to, you know, I just can't fly away and then still get something that's back in my hangar just right. available. Right. Okay. All right, that's the item bank. Let's take a look at the uh, ASOP terminal. And the last kiosk that I want to talk about is the ASOP terminal. Kaboom, thank you for the follow. Which we have positioned in the hangar, so you can request your ships from within the hangar and not just the spaceport. So they will still remain in the spaceport. So if you don't have a personal hangar in your location, you can request your ship also from there. What we're doing is we're changing the way that the ships spawn in the game. You can now request your ships from within the hangar and they will appear to you. But they won't just come out of thin air. What happens is the whole of the floor will open up. You get this like amazing view of the, of the hangar, the lights dim, the doors open. And the landing platform will be rising up towards you and your ship will be there. We try to balance it in a way that it doesn't take too much time for you, but also that it feels like it has the right weight to it, but also you don't have to wait for it too long. So now you have a seamless transition and a realistic way of storing your ships away. And the Alrighty, alrighty. All of you old Elite Dangerous people, yay, right? <laughs> yeah, this is Elite Dangerous stepped up a couple notches. Those of you who don't know, Elite Dangerous had a very similar system to this. You would land on a landing pad, and when you would arrive, it would go down into the ground. Um, and when you started the game, you'd wake up in that pad, you would go up. Unfortunately, you didn't have the ability to be have an external view to watch this process the way we were able to do here. Um, so I think this is cool. Uh, Kyle Roddy, give me your thoughts when you first saw this. I know we were wondering and speculating when we got the sneak peek for the floor, but uh, did this exceed your expectations or was it on point? Yeah, but, you know, I'm Very definitely expecting persons to go and complain the copy of my dangerous from now. I'm just joking. But, um, <laughs> you know, when we saw that, that sneak peek, um, so many questions, you know, uh, among many different people, many different persons about how this will operate. And I think this will definitely add it to the whole seamless kind of experience. Um, it, we've, come, we, we've come quite the distance away from clicking a node, stepping back and just watching it magically appear, mm-hmm. uh, to having this kind of smooth transition, which I definitely support, support and agree with. Um, I don't think it's going to, you know, it may seem a bit tedious uh, if, for instance, you load something onto your ship, then have to, you know, then you spawn it and then you're like, oh, crap, I have to, I forgot something <laughs> that to push it back down to the elevator again and, <laughs> and all that. But I think that will, again, encourage us to be a little bit more proactive when, when it comes to our planning and our, and our logistics um, decision-making-wise and, and, and those things. So it's one of those things I'm looking forward to testing to see just how, just how much it, change, it changes my, and, and affects my, uh, my, my decision-making process in the future. Nomad, how about you? How did you feel about this when you saw this new feature? I thought that was, I thought it was really, um, awesome. Mm -hmm. Um, my, my concern is, is standing there Mm -hmm. and falling over (laughs) into, (laughs) into the, that pit, you know what I mean? The vertigo kicks (laughs) in. You know, I don't, I don't know if he, if, if there's going to be like, you know, a wall, you know, Mm -hmm. you can't, you can't step out or if, you know. Or if you're just going to just not pay attention and fall in, what's going to happen? <laughs> they actually you do know? show that. They're going to answer your question in a couple seconds. So don't worry. Oh, okay. you'll, you'll see but, what but it is. <laughs> but it's awesome and epic. It's, I think, it I think it, it was definitely, it's not, it's definitely not what I expected, mm-hmm. uh, but it's, but it's, I think it's, it's going to, it's going to work really well. Yeah. Yeah. I can also see where this could lend itself maybe in the future. CIG in, in, inferred a little bit of this of underground hangars. You know, literally places that are, you know, you can't find them or you can't see them. They're underground. Um, it'd be really interesting to see if they did do something like that later. I know some people have been asking about that uh, once they set up their homestead, whether they could have something that's subterranean. Be kind of cool. But even if they don't, I think this is like you said, Cal Roddy, from the old days of looking at the floor and clicking on number two and stepping back. <laughs> I think this is leaps and bounds, and it does add a greater sense of immersion 
uh, to be in a hangar and call up your ship. Now, by the way, guys, this will be in all hangars. This is the way ships will come up, not just in your personal hangar. Um, but anytime you call up a ship, um, this type of action could happen. Now, what you won't have at certain places is the storage. Is that right, Calrati? You won't have the storage if you're not in your personal hangar. Oh, you mean like the freight elevators? Yeah. Well, you have those in the. You won't have those yeah. in the. Um... Yes. So those will be everywhere. the The only difference is that you can't keep those keep the keep items unstored in the hangar, but those will be accessible. Oh, right okay, 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 okay. So I misunderstood. So you can store things. You'll have a freight elevator there. You can store things as long as you put them in the storage area. Like if I'm my home base is R Corp, but I'm at Hurston. As long as I use the elevator, put it on the elevator and goes downstairs, it's fine. What I can't do is leave stuff scattered all over the hangar. Yeah, because we don't know what's going to happen when you leave the hangar. Okay. All right. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah, we're going to have to test and see. Okay. Okay. All right. So that's cool. That's very, very cool. Okay. I'm digging that. I'm digging that. All right. Um, yeah. Let's check out this next piece because uh, Nomad mentions his concerns. I think this next part covers his concerns. <laughs> Additionally, you can do clever things like call up a smaller vehicle, such as a ground vehicle, drive it off, and then call up a larger vehicle. Then you'll have access to your ground vehicles without having to go to another location. Additionally, you can do clever things like call up a smaller vehicle, such as a ground vehicle, drive it off, and then call up a larger vehicle. Then you'll have access to your ground vehicles without having to go to another location. Okay, so this is something we've been asking for for a long time, Calrati. Um, yeah. being able to load vehicles, right? Because before, CIG played with the idea of being able to spawn vehicles inside of vehicles. And it seems like now we're completely dodging that hand wavy them, right? Or will you think that will be a thing later still? That when you call up your ship, you can actually call it up with the vehicle inside? I think that goes awesome. backward. I don't know. What do you think? Well, since we're getting the ability to spawn, to quote-unquote spawn items and load items into... Um, cargo containers using the freight elevator kiosk. Mm -hmm. It could be possible that they may use something similar for our ships. You know, you have, you interact with the same kiosk, and instead of just interacting with empty cargo boxes, we can possibly interact with, you know, um, the ships and kind of bring back the whole hollow table kind of, kind of vibe. Yeah. And you look at the, the cargo grid and see what's in it and possibly say, okay, we can do that. Or, you may say, all right, that doesn't actually give us the friction, the subtle friction that, w that we want, and they may not do that and just let us spawn our vehicle as is and let us do that manually. Yeah. You know? I, 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 I understand. I'm, I'm reading what Urkel says. He says, yeah, it saves so much time. And I think, Urkel, does. I think one of the issues is that how we perceive time in this game may end up being different. Um. I think a lot of times we're driven by, I know I am from time to time, I'm driven by the end game, like the end result. That's what's driving me. And Chris Roberts has made it in some ways to me, seems he's made a statement or a, a, make, is making a statement that he wants the experience, the entire experience to be a part of it, not just the end game. And that the, 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 the things that happen between beginning and end have some type of significance to them. Um, if we, some of you guys will remember back when we first got uh, the trams and we used to get on a tram to go from Hurston, you know, you used to wait, like, was it four minutes? Was it? Yep. Four, minutes, four minutes for a tram. Sometimes. Yeah, it was, uh, it was a while. It was a while. Now, eventually they scaled that back. But when we waited for four minutes back then, it wasn't so bad. It, it felt like time was passing. But over time, they've reeled that in a little bit. Some of you remember when elevators felt like they were taking a few minutes. In fact, when elevators became instantaneous, there was a tremendous amount of people in the community who pushed back and said, the elevators are too fast. This ain't Star Trek. We, we want to feel like there's some passage of time. So I think <clears throat> that even though a lot of times we want to be able to get in and do things like that and be done, especially those things that seem tedious. I also think that there's a dynamic of reward. <laughs> Sometimes we don't feel it's reward, but we feel there's a level of accomplishment when we got past some tedium to get somewhere. 
Now, the tedium can't be so much that it feels grindy or really miserable, you know. Uh, oh, you were talking about getting a ship and loading it, flying to a rent. Oh, I'm sorry, Oracle. I thought you were referring to putting vehicles on a ship. So if that's what you were referring to, my apologies. I thought you were referring to something else. Thank you so much, Flippy Wayne, for that resub. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, I just saw the one line saying it took too much time and I missed your earlier part. So, But I will still say this, though, because I know there are some people who are concerned about the time process for all this, right? Because it's, it is much faster just to go to the terminal, call up your ship, and it's there. Um, it is much faster. But I think that all these processes, these different steps, have to be balanced in a way that we as gamers don't feel like it's wasting time, but also that it doesn't feel like we shot through everything and, and missed the moment of feeling like some things were accomplished. I don't know what you guys think about that. Yeah, I want to I wanna, I wanna just live... Um, I want to feel like I'm just immersed enough for my own taste to uh, to know that I'm doing something positive mm -hmm. in, in, in the game. There's going to be times where I'm be like, you know, hey, I got to get going. Let me just do this one, two, three, real quick. Right. You know, there's times where you want to sprint, and there's times you want to just walk. Mm -hmm. And and you know, you have that flexibility here. Yeah. Um, with uh, you know, you have that flexibility here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think ultimately, once there's that, once there's more value added time mm -hmm. over non value added time, mm -hmm. um, a, a healthy ratio, uh, I think that's something that all gamers will appreciate mm -hmm. um, versus all, at all time or the total time only having something that's value added. Yeah, because once again, um, we want to feel that passage of time and just adding that kind of value added activity mm -hmm. just enough will allow us to feel like, hey, um, it's driving me to make a decision to um, when I'm going from point A to point B so that when I get to that destination, I'll feel like, OK, I made the right decision, mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. OK, good point. All right. Let's hit this next one here. Uh, multiple ships, I think, is next. You'll be able to call up multiple ships and maybe have one person fly off with one ship, call another one, have another person in your party fly up with another ship. Or you can just call up a ship, change your mind, and then call up a different ship without having to leave or anything like that. It gives you a lot of flexibility. And I can already tell what some of you are thinking right now. We're not going to let the system like eat your body and store it into the inventory or anything like that. Uh, we'll make sure to account for that such that if there's a blocking change that happens, we'll stop the process, go back up to the default state, and then tell the player about the issues so that they can account for it. If you do want to jump into the platform just before it closes and fall to your death, you can fall to your death if you want to. Okay. <laughs> so this is really cool and we're really happy to get this in. It's been discussed for some years now and it's been a very tricky thing to fit in and certain techs required to be able to do it. You'd be able to have this hangar in your own space and, and call your own ships and do a lot more within the hangar now. Now that we're adding all of this new facility to the hangars in the game, allowing them to be persistent, adding these freight elevators, adding the ship platform. There's a lot of more things that we have to have in these hangars for them to be useful for what we're adding. Okay. So there you go, Nomad. You found out you can, uh, <laughs> you just have to be careful. Watch that, that orange stripe, that orange light when you're over there, that's all. Well, that's, that's the beauty of the system. You know, it's a <laughs> system. It's just a world that they created. It's flexible enough that you can make those mistakes and and still you know, real live in 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 a in a in a, in a, a physicalized world. And yeah. that's the beauty of the of the software that is this that is this this persistent universe. I think you'll be safe. You'll be at the kiosks. You don't have to worry about it. Yeah. You know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll send way much. back. <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Karate, any thoughts on this? Yeah, so on this subject of multiple ships, it, it did, you know, make me think a little, well, not a little, most likely it's probably much further on. Mm -hmm. And this has to do with the whole org system, you know, mm -hmm. um, because given that we will be able to spawn multiple ships uh, um, and one person can fly, it did make me think about the complexity of decoupling that hangar from the person who, you know, who owns the hangar. Mm -hmm. And uh, more specifically, the uh, ship kiosk. 
Wow. Uh, so let's say, for example, you know, Griff, you come to my hangar, and even though perhaps it's my hangar, kind of, um, will the system be able to code it in such a way where the ship terminal and ship spawning can be decoupled in such a way where you can spawn mm. the ship in my hangar? Mm. So we're kind of eating the development of the org system yeah. by allowing that multiple use of, or, you know, that, that use of someone's hangar mm -hmm. it's not only my things that, that can be you know spawn there ship wise or item wise etc cetera, etc cetera. because i'm going to assume if perhaps there is an item back there apart from the um the the freight elevator kiosks then possibly um you can spawn your small items via that item back in that persistent hanger in my mm -hmm. persistent hanger mm -hmm. so can that and can such a thing be extended to and what that means is that the item bank is kind of sort of decoupled from the persistent hanger, from the right hanger. right and such a thing be, be also applied in the future where you're now able to spawn your ship using that ship As so yeah assuming normal. assuming your ship is there you'd be able to exactly. say so be able to pull it up that's an interesting yeah, yeah. idea. When you mentioned about the org thing, that kind of stuck in my head too, because there are some orgs who literally have bought org ships, right? There's maybe one person, maybe the org president has access to that account, right? And let's say you've got, I don't know, 10 org ships. You know, will the limitation of how many ships that can be spawned from a location also change? You know, I could bring nine of my members down to my hangar because I'm the org person who has the rights to the ship. Um, you know, will it be a situation where I can actually have all 10 of those people, one behind the other? Because right now we have a limitation, right? I think it's only three ships or something that you can spawn into the verse. Is that Actually, right? Actually, that limitation is poof. Really? With, with oh, wow. Yep. Ooh, okay. Well, that answers that. <laughs> <laughs> that answers that. Okay. I don't know, however, when the, when, when the density manager came online for them to manage the items. I don't know if it, it affected it, but... Mm -hmm. I, from, from my recollection and, and chat can, you know, can, can also provide some information when that came online, they didn't limit the amount of ships that you can spawn. In oh, look at that. Wow. Wow. Okay. CIG. All righty. <laughs> All right. Last but not least, let's hear this final comment on this particular episode. Another thing that we've talked about is automated loading in the games. This allows you to still do commodity trading without needing to actually move the boxes yourself. It will be an option in the commodity terminal. Whenever you go and you pick the destination inventory, you'll be confronted with several options. One is the location inventory. The next will be all your ships that are at the location. If you choose a ship, you'll have the option to have it be automatically unloaded or loaded for you, of course, with an added cost. The ship has to be stored to allow for the transfer, and it will be time locked while that transfer is occurring. Different locations in the game will have different amounts of time. Places that are more optimized for trade are going to allow for faster transfer. You'll be able to still do the trading. You just have to wait a little bit and pay a bit more money. So your profits won't be quite as good in that case. Once the automatic loading process is finished, you can just go to the ASOP terminal in the hangar, access it, raise it and go off and you're on your way. If you care about cargo, this is going to be transformational. But even if you're not interested in cargo at all, it's still a foundational change for the game that fundamentally changes principles about inventory, physicality, and your play experience. The work's ongoing, we're nearly there. I think the team's done a great job on this. It's been tricky to get it working as it should be. It's a big milestone for the game that's been years in the making and coming. While I'm here to talk about it today, there's been a large number of teams across the entire company that have helped. Everybody from art, animation, VFX, through to all of the gameplay teams, engine teams. We've had a huge effort from Austin, Montreal, Los Angeles, Frankfurt, Manchester. It's been a big endeavor. So I wanna thank everyone that's been helping to see this vision through, and I'm really looking forward to getting this into your hands so that you can play with it.
All right, so I, I wanted to touch on that, let that last part play in particular. I know they talked about the commodities, being able to move those back and forth, which is really great. But I really wanted to also focus on the fact that they said that this was a cross the board, across the company project. Um, you know, a lot of times we know that each one of the different studios work on certain things, but they, they really made sure to give credit to everybody. There was a lot of folks involved with making this happen. And I know it's very, sometimes it seems like there's so many things we ask for from CIG and we say, what's taking so long? Um, but now that we're seeing the depth of this, and, and this will probably go even deeper than where they are right now, it starts to kind of make sense for what they're trying to accomplish and do in the game. Um, so I really appreciate the fact that they, you know, brought that up, that uh, it took a lot of work to get us to this place. It sounded really easy back in the days, but now that we look at it, we can see how involved it is. You guys got any thoughts? Yeah, but before we do, uh, Admiral said ad starts, well, in I guess 10 seconds from now. So I don't know if you want to continue or not. Oh, it does? Oh, okay. No, <laughs> I don't even know how long the ad is. I don't know why I'm not getting the ad messages. This is driving me crazy. I'm supposed to be getting it if nobody <laughs> else gets them. And I get nothing popping up on my screen saying there's a... It did once when we first did it, and I've not gotten it since then. So i got to go in and check my defaults. All right, guys. If the, uh, if the channel... Yeah, I know, and I own the channel. I know. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, welcome to Twitch. Thanks, Hans. <laughs> <laughs> Danger Holeville says, I subscribe. I don't get any ads. Okay. All right. No ads here. All right. Well, if you guys aren't getting ads, you know, we'll we'll keep it rolling. We'll keep yeah, it rolling. We'll keep um we're about to wrap yeah. up anyway. But go ahead, go ahead, Calrati. <laughs> right. So, you know, when they talked about this, I got super excited, but particularly for the smaller ships. I spoke to a few persons and, and you guys as well um uh, last week because I was very, very excited. Um, particularly because of what the timer will bring. Mm -hmm. uh, historically, we've always been um, plagued by uh, the, because of the instantaneity behind the purchases, mm -hmm. it's not slow enough for the server to refresh the cargo timers. Of course, most likely they could have up to the, the, the refresh rates mm -hmm. of the, you know, of the cargo availability, but for the sake of having some kind of, you know, pace. Uh, for the economy, they set that refresh rate. And because of the instantaneity with respect to the purchases, that was creating a bit of a problem. And when you have, you know, smaller ships and such, like the like the Max, like the Cutlass um, Black, like the Hull A, where you're not really seeing as much uh, profit, mm -hmm. um, as, even when you want to purchase high valuable items mm -hmm. at low quantity, then that's a bit of a problem, right? Um, mm -hmm. you, you don't always want to utilize a, an extremely large cargo um, cargo ship right. um, any at any outpost that you go for a single star system, mm -hmm. um, even if, you know, they'll continue to rebalance it. So when they brought these on, I thought, okay, we're going to have some refresh timers, which would mean that you're going to Deacons, you're going to Hicks as a freelancer max, mm -hmm. you would probably have a better time loading um, your cargo, even if it's automatic, than let's say a C2, mm -hmm. even though they still have access to loading it, um, you can be on your way, mm -hmm. especially if you're participating in some kind of time-based event like Ninetales or Blockade Runner. Mm -hmm. If they're only lasting for about two hours, at least you can zip in, load your stuff, zip out, and at least you'll you'll be able to sell something. And by the time you come back, the C2 is still being loaded in, mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. that most encourage and drive a bit of a shift to what kind of ships are used cargo-wise for these types of events. You know, you may not oh, you may not find the the larger cargo vessels being used or being the most effective for things like these. Very true. Um, and just out of these out of these events, you'll actually find some kind of feasibility and incentive in using the mm -hmm. car. Good point. Good oh. point. Um, I wanted to show you guys this real quick before we wrap up. I almost forgot because I didn't get to include this in my notes earlier, but some of you all will remember these two images. Um, make sure I get the right one up first. Um, this one here, Calrati, which you were just kind of talking about. This was one of the sneak peeks, gang. Now, we haven't seen this yet, and some of you may remember it. Uh, on the right, there's a cutlass there. But on the left, this looks like this is at on a moon. Okay, it's not a distribution center. At least I don't think it is. But there's a cargo elevator there. 
that's bringing up items to be loaded. And I'm really curious to see what the balance, I know we've been talking about the hangers and everything, but today's show is about clutch cargo. And I'm really curious as to how this is going to start taking place. You know, you go inside, you order from a kiosk, your cargo comes up in this elevator. Uh, what will be the process of moving things? Um, this brings up the whole thing about armistice, whether armistice is needed, not needed, whether security is needed, not needed. Um, you know, will there be people waiting to watch you as your elevator door opens, come up and steal your stuff, right? Yeah. Uh, or will it be that there is armistice just in this area? Uh, or is it a possible for a pirate to come in and disable armistice in this, if you're not paying attention in this area or shut down with protections are there? Um, I'm really curious to see how this is going to get built out. You guys got any thoughts on that with, you know, doing cargo at other locations and moving it into your ships? Hmm. Yeah, it does. It doesn't. It doesn't seem very secure. That's for sure. Um, <laughs> You're definitely out in the open. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's that's kind of it's kind of nerve wracking. Um, but no, I, I have no idea how that's going to work. I yeah. really don't. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, it's just all we got is a sneak peek. So you know, yeah. Cal Roddy, what do you got? Any thoughts? The only thing that I can think of is he's been smiling. He's been smiling ever since I, this came on, though, man. I mean, he, sees, to, he sees no I'm pain to here. With other people's cargo. Oh yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> but like, similar to how persons who may not have access to uh, someone else's ship, mm -hmm. where where it has to do with tractoring, uh, tractor beaming their own cargo. Um, the only thing I can think of is even if the the freight elevator for that external container opens. Someone else, if they aren't in the party or something, mm -hmm. or the cargo bit is locked, then maybe that's the only way um, the cargo owner can interact with the with the cargo, or if they're in a party. But that creates the other question: is uh, of all right. Let's say you dropped um, the the cargo container mm -hmm. on the path, right? Mm -hmm. um, what's going to happen there? Mm -hmm. Like you said. If, May, are they going to temporarily an, uh, assign some kind of armistice or special armistice where only party owners can access or track to beam the cargo? Or mm -hmm. are they just going to leave it up to people's responsibility yeah. uh, mm -hmm. to be able to see how this goes in the very beginning? Yeah. You don't know. Yeah. I mean, it, it's, it's both for purchase and delivery too, right? You're bringing yeah. something here, you know, I mean, you can definitely see pirates. You know what I mean? Just exactly. hanging out, just hanging out. Any ship that's coming and going, they're going to be watching, you know. Yeah, um, once it's out of the elevator, yeah. it's, it's, it's out in the open. Yeah, or once you open the back of your ship, right? Same thing, yeah. right? I mean, you know, there's a point of vulnerability. And don't get me wrong, I'm not against points of vulnerability. The question is, what's the counterpoint, right? You know, what is the balance there that gives both sides opportunity when that happens, yeah. you know? And yeah. it, again, it could be it could be where, like, they've just like how we have the comm stats, right? It could be where the place has, has the armistice up. But if the pirates get there and disable it when you get there, or they disable it while you're in the midst of doing your thing, I mean, they, they can come up with all types of cool stuff, you know, yeah. to make it challenging. Well, even so, who's to stop someone from spawning a PTV or a vehicle and just parking it in front of there? How do, yeah. how do you move a yeah. locked ship or a locked vehicle? <laughs> yeah. <You know? laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of stuff there. That's very true. Um, one other image I want to show you guys real quick, and we're going to wrap this up for sure because this is the last one, but uh, this is all speculation conversation we're having now, gang. Uh, and it's this one here. Um, CIG put this in as a sneak peek as well just recently. They've been doing all these cargo images, and this was another one. Uh, and I was assuming that maybe this was the distribution center because of the, you mentioned this earlier, Cal Roddy, the levitating uh, trackpad that they've got there. That they've got those on. Um, yeah, but I am curious about this level of cargo work. I know that they did show when they did the distribution centers, when there was the one mission where they had to go in and steal some stuff, they're using multi-tools to bring things down from these shelves that were up above. And it looks like this is the same type of thing here. Um, but I am very curious about this movement of items when you're outside of the safety, as you said, no man, outside of the safety of a hangar. Right. When you've got to start moving these things, what logistics do you have to think about? Not just in the sense of the load master logistics, but the security logistics as well. Mm -hmm. Right. When we're starting to move items like this, you can see it's a pretty big thing. Engine tech 
thank you so much for that follow. Thank you. We appreciate that. And Milky Moto 75, thank you as well for the follow. I'm sorry I missed you earlier. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay. Any thoughts about that, guys, before we go into our Q&A? We've got a couple of Q&As here. I want that cover thing in my persistent hanger if I can't oh, get yeah. it. <laughs> you don't want the cart? You don't want the push cart? I don't want the cart. You don't want the shopping <laughs> cart? That's what I was thinking. Go back to my you don't want the Costco cart. Okay, well, hey, you know, whatever. <laughs> that, that thing is definitely not going to be tipping over, that's for sure. I really, I really like that thing. I really do. Okay, fair, fair enough. All right, we've got a couple of questions here from some folks. Uh, let's see if I can bring this over and read it. Our first one is from Pops in Space, and he says, has CIG ever said how much the max SCU, SCU will be in hangers? Uh, have they ever mentioned how much you can hold in a hanger? And I don't know. I haven't seen anything. I know they have a limit right now on our personal inventory, Pops. Have you guys seen anything in relation to the hangers? Like, how much stuff to go down in that freight elevator? That's a really think, good question, yeah. I think some persons were speculating from the sitcom video. Mm -hmm. They were just counting. And I think it was about six something SCU. Uh, but we don't know for sure. I can't remember, but I think it was just speculation for now. Yeah. I don't think she actually said anything different. Yeah, I mean, it's not, just like how right now pops you, like even when you put on a backpack, it'll tell you, you can. this is how much stuff can fit in it. Same thing when you have the world whatever local place is, it'll give you a number 100,000, whatever it is. I don't think that they've designated it yet, but it's a very good question because we talked about this earlier. Can you max it out? You know, are you going to be charged if you can, can you only carry so much? And if you want to have more expansion, you have to pay for it. Um, we'll have to see, but it's a very good question. Um, the next question is from Shimpasta. Will CIG start selling furniture for our hangers? Um, there is some furniture already, Shimpasta. I think you know that already. A few items, right? Not any big stuff, right? There's a there's a there's a sleeping cot. Um, you guys, some of you were lucky enough back in the day to get the big bendy, big Benny's vending machine. Um, there are um, there's a thing oh, there. Man. What's it called? Oh, I was saying the hologram tables. The, the hologram aquarium. tables, the aquariums. We've got those. Oh yeah, the aquariums. Um, We've also got the, uh, what's the other thing? Oh, we've got a workbench. It's a repair workbench. We're supposed to be able to work on your weapons and fix them and do stuff like that. Uh, now, if you're talking about a recliner, a lounge chair, a bed, and all the other stuff, yes, the answer to that is yes. Uh, now, whether where it'll be, I don't know. Because remember when they showed us the prop stuff, when they were showing us stuff for Pyro, and they showed us all the different items, flower plants, and all the stuff that they'll be able to buy and purchase. So I'm sure there will be... Uh, a furniture store opening up near you, okay? Um, <laughs> or maybe you can go in and, and pick up your widescreen TV or whatever it is you want. I'm hoping that's going to happen, uh, yeah, Shimpasa. I want mm -hmm. a standalone, maybe miniature, just to give, continue to add value or retain value for the vulture. Uh -huh. I want a furniture, some kind of crafting table or something like that. Yeah, crafting. Mm -hmm. Hmm. That'd be interesting. Okay. What if they're still going to have uh, display cases? We still have those. Yeah, we yeah, have we have them. Yeah, I don't know. I think you can buy them off the store because they, when they reopened the store up, the pledge store or the subscriber store, they made everything available from now all the way back to 2014, and I think oh. those tables are in there during that period of time. I'm kind of curious as to why they only went back to 2014, but I'm not mad at them. But you know, um, those tables, the trophies, all that stuff and everything that you'd be able to buy. So, um, and then lastly, we've got a question from Thrakazak. Each pledge ship comes with a hanger for the rare, sorry, for the rare, the person with, okay, for the rare, the person with more than one ship, do you think people will eventually be able to own multiple personal hangers throughout the verse? Um, that's a very good question. If you guys know what he's asking, you guys know that there are people who buy a separate account uh, and it allows them to have another hanger. You may have one account that says you can have a Selfland hanger. Uh, you're, uh, maybe you bought another package that gives you an AeroView hanger. And the question is, right now, when you pick your home, your home, if my, I'm R Corp, Area 18, that's where my home is. And Thrakazag is saying, will there be a time where I could maybe have my Selfland hanger here at Area 18, but maybe in Terra, I'm able to use one of my other packages that I have and make that my home too. Calrati, Nomad, any thoughts? Hmm. Well, as a guy with 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 who's only ever had one account, I don't know. I really don't know how that works. Okay. Um, but I think I don't see how it, you wouldn't be able to allow that. 
if you have if you have multiple accounts yeah the deal was if you had an account you would be able, you know each, each account came right. with a hanger right right uh, a package i should say a package not not an account but a package so oh okay yeah you know when you you buy your ship and they'll say you get this hanger with it you know kind of thing you know now, multiple accounts uh, is different but we're talking about just packages that have different hangers now i don't know Dracosag, my question also comes up that let's say i have all which i do let's say i've got ships that have all four hangers and i say i want to start at r corp will i be able to pick which hanger i want at r corp or will it have to be whatever the r corp hanger is in other words can i say i want my revel in york that's what i want to be there or will they say nope Revel in York is not at our corp. If you want to revel in York, you got to be at so and so. I mean, I don't know. I don't know how they're going to do that. Are they going to mitch max hangers? So because you know, Microtech's got Aeroview, right? Can I put a Selfland hanger at Microtech, or will I have to go with Aeroview at Microtech? So the answer is yes. Somebody says yes. Fire says yes. The answer is yes. Okay. I don't think the game design team would like that. <laughs> uh, yeah, I just going to drive them crazy. <laughs> It's gonna drive them nuts, right? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. You know, it's a good question. Like, not to be funny, the VFG hanger is an asteroid hanger, that industrial hanger. You know, it sounded great when you say I've got no, you know, I've got some industrial ship out of some asteroid belt working. I got my mole out there working. But what if I want my asteroid hanger, you know, my VFG hanger, you know, at Lorville? Well, so are are you talk are you talking about all your same stuff, but not my stuff in a different. I'm, not my stuff. I'm not worrying about where my stuff is. I'm worrying about the style of my hanger. Okay. You see what yeah, I'm saying? Revel in York at Grim Hex. Yeah, right. Yeah, you know your <laughs> no, nice of the aesthetic. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You got your nice smooth Revel in York over at Grim Hex. Is that going to be legit? Oh, okay. <laughs> Level design team is just going to have a headache. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. You know, we'll have to see. We'll have to see what happens with that. Um, but anyway, you guys get the question. I think it's a great question, Thrakazog, and I wish I could tell you what the answer is to that, but unfortunately, we'll have to see. And again, this is all would, being iterated. Go ahead, go ahead, uh, yeah. I would hope that even if we aren't, um, they don't give us the ability to have those have that specific theme of hangar mm -hmm. at a place where it doesn't necessarily fit the aesthetic, mm -hmm. that perhaps outside of the jurisdiction um, we are able to, you know, have some kind of personal space, um, mm. and, you know, have the, the, the freedom of having, of having our revel in New York at, at, um, at Art Corp, not necessarily Area 18. Yeah. You know, so. Okay. Well, we'll have to figure it out, boy. Okay. <laughs> All right, gang. Well, we're going to wrap it up because we are over time. We are way over time, but we had a lot of information to take in and I really, really hope that, uh, we shared some things with you that maybe you weren't aware of, especially the earlier stuff we saw of how hangers have evolved over the years and how now hangers have become integral to this whole idea of cargo. I can't wait. We didn't even get on this subject yet because I knew the show was going to be too long. Cargo decks. I want cargo decks working. I want to be able to store mine. Stuff is in the cargo. I want to be able to take the whole C and come out at the cargo deck, not over to the admin office. But that's a whole nother show when we get to that point in the game. We're not there yet, but uh, we're looking forward to being at that point, hopefully pretty soon. Because cargo decks have been around now for, what, three years, four years, three or four years now. Oh, and we're still not using them. Oh, yeah. Still not using them. All right. Let's talk about what we've got coming up next. Um, thank you guys once again for being here today. Um, Cal Roddy, let's talk about uh, Soul Talk for me real quick, and I'll do the rest of them, please. Yeah, sure. So on Thursdays, 9 p.m. Eastern, we have Soul Talk where we talk about all things that CIG has posted throughout the weekend. We talk about Inside Star Citizen. We also talk about Star Citizen Live. We also talk about roadmaps, monthly reports, um, you know, this week in Star Citizen. We also showcase Machinima. And you are free, invited to come and share your, your opinions, talk about, you know, what you think or how you, what your opinion was on whatever post or topic that CIG had. And that's all about Soul Talk. All right. And then on Saturday, next Saturday, I will be here next Saturday. Uh, my daughter got engaged yesterday, so I couldn't be here. I was a surprise Jeez. engagement oh, party congrats. at 3 o'clock, so that's why I wasn't here. But uh, I will be here next Saturday for Soul Voices. That's our one-on-one -on -one show where we talk about Spectrum and Reddit. Uh, I got two daughters getting engaged, y'all, but believe it or not, within months of each other, I got two daughters engaged now. Um, thank God I get a gaming room. Once they move out, I get the big <laughs> own gaming room. Um, but, so, uh, yeah. I got to ask. Uh-huh. You gave the um, the other half 
the talk like oh no these these are good guys man i got two <laughs> these two these two these are two southern boys from new, from new, uh, north carolina they're 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 down home they're yes sir excellent, no sir excellent. open doors you know <laughs> hey they 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 on the they on the on the plane all right you to be back, right? <laughs> you, oh you know me anyway um so that's going to be soul voices next saturday 3 p.m eastern time talking about spectrum reddit anything else in the industry got some cool stuff next week that we're going to be talking about next sunday next sunday our last show for the month of march um will be just ships delayed just ships denied some of y'all might get that I, I did a little pun in there okay um that's gonna be uh next sunday uh at 7 p.m eastern time don't forget our time has changed where we're going to be talking about this thing where folks have said where's my ships you know what's going on you know my banu where's my polaris where's my idris <laughs> we're gonna be talking about that next week and expressing our thoughts about not just those ships that are in the past that we've been waiting on, but also ships that are lined up already. And how will the community respond to this idea of ships being built out? Will the process speed up? You know, once the persistent universe, we've moved to that next level, will they be faster? Uh, or will this pace be the same thing that we'll just have to look forward to each time? So that's going to be next week. Hopefully you guys will be able to join us for that show on next Sunday at 7 p.m. Eastern time. Also, we're just, this is our 197th show. In three weeks, we're going to be celebrating our 200th episode of Soul Citizens. 200 episodes of this particular one, the Sunday show. We've got a whole bunch of other ones, too. But to um, that's going to be celebrated in just three weeks, about mid-April. And hopefully, Cal Roddy, we will be in 3.23 around that time. Hopefully, yeah. we'll have something to talk about. That would be a great subject to talk about for our 200th episode. Uh, so hopefully, we're going to shoot for that uh, just within the next couple of weeks. So hopefully, you guys will be able to join us. Uh, in two or three weeks uh, when we reach episode number 200. Keep your eyes open for that. And I think that's about it. Thank you, everybody, uh, for who was here today. Kel Roddy, tell people where they can find you. Very happy to be here. Sure, and thank you for, also for all the followers. That's Zito and mm -hmm. I totally butchered that. <laughs> yeah, I know. And also, thank you for Bye Twill. Uh, so, yeah, you can, you know, catch me on Discord, Soul Citizens uh, Discord. You can also uh, catch me on YouTube as well as Spectrum. So I'm here wherever you need me to be. Very cool. Nomad, where can people find you? You can find me on Twitch at uh, Nomad. It was 1701. Twitch.tv uh, Twitch at Nomad1701. All righty, all righty. All right, guys, we're going to get ready to load up and get out of here. Uh, think about logistics, dream about it, have your nightmares. <laughs> it's coming, 323. Um, we're going to send you guys over to Kimmy65. Kimmy is out there flying around in space right now. I'm looking at him. He's looking at his Moby glass, and we're going to send you guys over to him. So when you get over and see Kimmy, let him know you came over from the Soul Citizens. If you like what you see, boom, follow, like him, tell him that you're digging it. And we appreciate everybody who is here today, all the follows, the bits, the subs, the comments. You guys are always wonderful to us. Once again, Yo-Yo Meg, thank you for sending all of the Double Dog team over here. We really appreciate you guys. We love you, Meg, and we hope you guys have a great week. Please take care of yourselves. Stay safe. And as always, as we tell you every week, peace, love, and soul. Take care, gang. We'll see you later. Ciao.